I am not just your personal guard. I'm also mandated by His Majesty, your father, to always be with you as your personal advisor and... Look, uh, Anuka, it's too late for that lecture. Okay. Not to want the crown prince of my kingdom, whose safety and welfare is my primary responsibility. Can I not sleep nor read its book as a student this late into the night? Come on, what is it? What is eating you? Talk to me. <sighs> My prince, please uh, put yourself together, okay? I'm trying. And I've been since we left the orphanage this afternoon. I just cannot! My prince, you need to know that the degree exam is fast approaching, commences in just two weeks, and you're here telling me that you... Come on, please, put yourself together, okay? Damn you and the exams! Here am I, trying to battle with a feeling that it's about to destroy every virtue and belief that I have been taught since childhood. And you're blabbing on about some bloody exams? I'm trying to get my sanity back! You're, you're beginning to scare me, your hands. Are you in danger? Come on, talk to me. Are you in any trouble? No, talk to me. Tell me, what is it? What is eating you those day? I am in. In love. Sounds crazy, right? I know. Everything is just crazy. I allowed myself to be a victim of love affair science. And the object of that love. It's a Catholic nun. A reverend sister at that. Are <coughs> you joking, haven't you? I didn't only hopelessly fall in love with the nun at the orphanage this afternoon. I invited her to come visit me. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Please drink this. What is it? It's holy water. Drink it. I'm bowed down your head. Let me anoint you with this oil. You know, I'm pretty such evil thoughts. Out of your mind. Yes. You possess by the devil. Drink it. in every sense but why did you insist yesterday that I should come to your house I mean what do you want from me do you want to hear it without mincing of words okay I love you sister Amy. and I'm not crazy no I'm not it's just that I have never had a strong feeling for any woman like I feel about you. And that feeling invaded me yesterday, my entire being, when I saw you at the orphanage. And even now as we speak, it's just getting stronger and stronger. It was so strong, it kept me away from my books yesterday. And every time I try to, to take the thought away, it's... Do you have some such problem, Your Highness? Call me Rogers, please. And to answer your question, I have no such problem. 
You mean that you saw me very well yesterday and that you have seen me very well here too? Yes. I saw an angel that captivated my heart yesterday. And I'm still seeing clearly now. And you are seeing the robe I am wearing? Yes, I do. I know where you're going. Listen, I'm also a Catholic. Or a devil in the Holy Roman Catholic Church. I feel the devil is not capable of loving. The devil is capable of lust, Rogers. This is part of destruction you are working on, and God forbid I should work it with you. Excuse me. Look, Ivy. It was said that the wind blows where it wants to blow, and no one can stop it. The Holy Spirit is like the wind. And those were the words of Pope John Paul II to the leaders of Cuba a few years ago. Now, picture this. Love is like the wind. Not you, not me, not even the oath of celibacy that you took can stop it from growing where it wants to grow. Let me pray for you. Walk in your hug and then you can pray for me after. Your soul is suffering, Rogers. Is yours at ease? I can see it in your eyes. You are agitated. Look, Sister Ivy. Together, let's end this mutual spiritual turmoil with just a hug. May God forgive us. God, how can I be having this type of sinful encounters with him in my dream every night in the past six days? I changed my phone number blocking him from getting me on the phone and gave instruction that he should never be allowed into this orphanage again. That has effectively made it impossible for him to talk to me or even meet with me again. Poor God. I'm in love with him too. I'm a reverend sister God. Please take this sinful cup away from me. To know where you are. Please, not now. I'm not just your personal guard. What is bothering you? What is I it? Am... I said I am fine. Just let me be. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Emeka. Look, I'm sorry. I, you're right. I'm in a very bad mood. And I know I ought to be on campus having fun with my friends, my graduation day and all of that, but my heart is too heavy for such. Is it still about Sister Ivy? Yes. I just cannot get the lady out of my mind. Can you not allow me to advise you on this? No. Keep your advice for now. I... I wrote this letter and I want you to go to the orphanage and give it to her personally. And until she collects it, you do not come back. Is that understood? That's what it is. Oh, mm -hmm. 
I know you were not expecting to hear from me again after the way you left my house. You have done everything to make sure we don't see or talk to each other ever again. But the love I have for you for the past five weeks has flogged me with a cane, stabbed me with a dagger, shot me with a gun, and fed me with the most potent poison. Yet I have refused to die. Please, come and help me kill it. Or give it a true healthy life. I have just graduated from the university today and will be returning to my kingdom in two days time. The only thing I would consider more tragic than my own death now is if you will refuse to see me tomorrow. From 10 a.m. tomorrow, I will be in my car three blocks away from the gate of the orphanage waiting for you. Save my poor troubled soul, please. Come and meet me in there so that we can go somewhere and talk things over. I beg you in the name of Mary, the mother of God, please don't say no. Prince Rogers. happening to me. God, please help me in this temptation. Sister Ivy, you requested to see me. Yes, Sister Rhoda. I am in urgent need of private moment with God. The chapel is open. Or do you want me to come and pray with you? No, thanks. Thank you, Michael. I want to go and pray before the Blessed Sacrament at Cathedral's Chapel. The Cathedral? Are you in some kind of trouble? God will restore my peace of mind once I go before him in prayers at Cathedral's Chapel. Be it unto you according to thy words. Amen. You don't know how much this means to me. Where are we going? Well, I want to take you somewhere very peaceful and beautiful. Wait. What are you doing? You do not expect me to fully a man like you in your couch, wherever it is you are taking me to my room. Do you? What? Ivy, you're an angel. Move the car. Yeah. 
This is it. What do you think about the place? It is it's beautiful and peaceful. Yeah. And good for soul searching too. Very calm. What do you really want from me? Soul freedom. For you or for me? Both of us. I don't know about you, but what you have done since the day we met was to imprison my soul in a cage of guilt. Guilt? Ivy, what are you guilty about? I lied to Sister Rhoda just to be here with you. Do you know how spiritually debased such could make a known feel? Why not go, Your Highness, and allow me to fight this spiritual battle alone, Your Highness? My name is Rochas, okay? And I cannot leave you alone. I cannot do that. I try to fight love on my own, but obviously I was utterly defeated by the army of love. Ivy, come, let's fight love together so we can prevail together or lose to love together. That's the only way we can find ourselves out of this emotional quagmire we find ourselves in. I am not doing spiritually better than you are. What applies to you applies to me. I'm not doing any better. Come, walk with me. Let's take a walk. Come on. Promise me that you will not try that again. <sighs> Ivy, let's walk, please. Promise me that. Look, listen, I'm a prince. And I cannot make such promises, things that I'm not sure about. I'm a Catholic now, Your Highness. Okay, Ivy, are you going to walk with me or should I take you back to the orphanage? No. I told Sister Rhoda that I'll be spending some hours where I told her I was going to. Okay, so let me take you to that place then. You want us to walk holding hands, right? I will not take the hand of an angry lady.
talk to you about water. Listen. It's one of God's most powerful creation. Refreshing, life giving, necessary for the survival of every single living thing, and the most important factor for natural harmony. Yet this peaceful, harmless looking thing is one weapon in nature's arsenal that not even the most powerful man-made weapon can contest its destructive force. That's the irony of water. The irony is also true about love. True love. Now, how can you and I handle what we have for each other to nourish our souls like water does when it's properly applied than to destroy our peace, joy, and lives as water does when there is a deluge or tsunami? If I know the answer to that question, I won't be here with you. There is one thing I am very sure of here. And that is that the type of earthquake you caused on my soul since you were met is such that it's going to produce a very devastating tsunami if you didn't help me now to stop it. That's what. She's soon with you. Are you out of your mind? There's a building at the far left where we can hire swimsuits. Let's rent some. Swim. Now, where will we dry ourselves? I have a room in this hotel. How are we doing it? Stop crying. Look, I understand how you feel about the situation. How dare you lie to me that you understand how I feel, you devil. <laughs> Do you know the special implications of what we just did for every sister like me? God. <laughs> how have I done? just employed one of the most precious gift God has given to mankind your free will free will free will 
to disgrace myself at the church of God in this sinful manner. God. I feel like killing you and committing suicide here. Really? Use this. It's a handy weapon. Use it and kill me. Kill me and kill yourself. And let's face God together. I want to watch you explain to him that murder and suicide are more preferable to you than spiritual freedom and self-expression, which is exactly what happened between you and I today. Go ahead. I greet you, leaders of Alabama Kingdom. I know you'll be asking me your mind. How come a man who presided over the royal cabinet meeting could be said to be normal a few hours later? To be brief, His Royal Majesty collapsed while discussing a private family matter with me. What a shocking tragedy. It is true that my elder brother, His Royal Majesty, Yigwe Adiele Okeke, Anyangwo the seventh of Alabama Kingdom. There's no more.
left you with me. <laughs> My stepbrother Charles. The entire people of this kingdom. You'll be fine. <laughs> I'm here not only as your son, but also as my father. And you can see and touch and remember. It's okay. Try the tears. I want to see my father. how difficult it is for you. But you need to be strong. Thank you. Dad, how could you do this? How could you? I just graduated. And I was on my way back to tell you. <laughs> Instead of you be hugging me. Congratulating me on my success. Look at me. Drenching your noble body. Tears of grief. Oh, daddy. You <coughs> can't. Well, now I'm back. And I'm going to take over. Just as you wish. It is the tradition of our people. I pray you be with me. Encourage me. And I promise you that I will make this kingdom greater than it was during your reign. I need your protection. I still can't believe that. <laughs> Once I come back from the bishop's office, I'll, I'll pray with you, okay?
elders of Abama Kingdom. I want to thank you all, and especially the good people of this kingdom, for your immense support to my family since my father left us last week to answer the call of his ancestors. As the crown prince of this kingdom, I know what it takes. And I totally know what is expected of me with regards to the empty throne. I know that even as a crown prince, there are strict rules and regulations with regards to ascending the throne. And that is why I've called for this meeting that the grey hairs of this kingdom can properly brief me on the succession process. Mm. Hello. Uh, the, the, this question is for the council. And as the traditional prime minister, you speak. Your Highness. Words were what your noble mouth produced. Wisdom was what we heard. It is the wise that admit ignorance of a subject matter before men of lesser status to him. Who are we not to do what? the next animal of Abama Kingdom once. May you live long. And you too. Now to your request. No one can mount this throne without your father being committed to the Mother Earth. Not even you can do that, even after his burial, without being fully married. Bearing that in mind, the elders here mandated me to ask you, have you any maiden in your mind at the moment? Your Highness? Can my father be buried without me getting married first? Of course, yes, he could. Right. Then let's start the burial arrangements immediately. All right. What about your marriage? Uh, they asking if if Made a choice, a choice. Uncle, I know what was asked. I heard them. My father's funeral and my marriage are two different events, sad and happy respectively, and I feel that they should not be discussed together. Having said that, Uncle, I'm putting you in charge. You and Ono in charge of the burial arrangements. Please get back to me every step of the way. Mm. As your highness, please. This meeting is over. Thank you. Dad. Nelson. I, I thought you were going to be. We haven't. Sit down, son. As you well observe, Ivy, your brother and I ought to be in bed by now, but we are not. We couldn't. Is, is anything the matter? Yes. Your sudden return from Nigeria and made calls to our parish priest and our bishop earlier today and both denied having any prior information that you were coming back. What's going on? Hmm. 
There is nothing that the Archdiocese of Lagos didn't it fit to post me back to my home diocese here in South Africa. That's all. And they did so without communicating with the diocese and leadership down here. IV, you have been wearing this hard expression since you came back earlier. When we walked in here a while ago, we met you sitting down and brooding instead of sleeping. Or someone who should be having a jet lag. And it is past 11 p.m. Tell us, what happened in Nigeria? Are you in trouble? No, I, I, I was just missing the kids at the orphanage. There is nothing serious. Okay. I will make a few calls in the morning and have you posted back to that orphanage please. immediately. Don't, Dad. Please, I, I, I am done there. I, I want a new challenge here. That is what I came back for. In fact, I was basing that requested for my redeployment. Yes, I did. Ivy, I am a well-respected man in Catholic Church in this country and the whole of Johannesburg. And I do not need to remind you of how much I value my reputation. There's nothing, absolutely nothing that I cannot do to protect it. Same goes for your brother Nelson. If there's something that is going on, that is capable of bringing this family's name to disrepute. You better tell us. Don't hide it from us. Or, let's go, son. Dad. Nelson, please. There is something that is I got myself into, eh? Eyes, restless mind, and now press from my family. God, please save me. Yes, mom. I am in love with a certain lady in Lagos. Lagos? Of what tribe is she? Mother, am I forbidden to marry from a particular tribe? Well, if that is the answer, then I don't think there's a need for us to discuss where she's from. But rather, the question should be, is she a good girl? And to that I will say a big yes. Yet, there is a problem, Mom. What problem? I haven't asked her to marry me yet, and I do not know if she will easily agree when I do. She's a special kind of girl, a royal material, a queen material. Well, does this special lady love you? Yes, well, she does, but... Rochas, please, there's no time for you to start with me right now. Just forget about that lady. Mother. Are you asking me to forget about a lady that I madly love? For who? Rogers, your father and I had a virtuous lady in mind for you before he died. I will just invite her over so that you can Mother, see. Mother, stop it. Please, stop it. Not even an angel sent from heaven can take the place of the lady that I love. I am going to marry her. I will find her 
I must marry her. Rogers, your father is no more, and you're the crown prince of the kingdom. As such, the fate of the people's throne is in your hands. The implication is that you cannot leave the kingdom until the vacuum on the throne is properly filled, unless the royal cabinet authorizes you to which I, have, I doubt they would. Mother, my royal status will be meaningless to me if I cannot have the lady that I so desire to be my queen. The cabinet will have to understand that. Otherwise, I will force them to understand with a royal decree. The entire funeral ceremony went very well. From planning to finish, it was wonderful. Everything went according to plan. And I must thank all of you for your selfless efforts in that regard. Um, may our ancestors reward you all accordingly. Now, having said that, let me tackle the question that I was asked about my marital plans. Well, yes, I do have a maiden in mind, but convincing her to marry me will prove quite difficult. Um, but whose daughter is she? So we can talk to her on your behalf through her family? Well, uncle, um, matters concerning her, I really wish to treat as a private affair. Besides, she's not from this kingdom. My prince, time is of the essence here. There is a limit to the period the throne can remain vacant, according to our culture. Well, how much time do I have? Twelve calendar months. Twelve calendar months. So who will be in charge of uh, the matters concerning the kingdom within that period? Um, well, our royal tradition allows you to appoint either your mother or your uncle, Enimba, to preside over the affairs of the kingdom as a regent till you come back and get married and coronated as king. If the regency arrangement is chosen by you. It, however, must not last more than one year. If after one year you are not around to mount the throne, then you automatically lose it to your stepbrother, Prince Charles. Oh no, I don't see the need for that lengthy explanation. His Highness is not going anywhere. Are you, my prince? Well, I must. If I must get married to be Igwe, I will have to look for the lady after my heart and convince her to marry me. But until then, what happens to... Uh, uh, my prince, uh, don't worry. I'll hold fort for you. Don't worry. Well, uncle. That is my decision alone to make. True word, my prince. Who have you chosen then? I want my mother to hold forth for me until I get back. Uh, prince, uh, uh, your mother is not in the right frame of mind to shoulder such a peculiar task. And it's not an easy thing to do for someone who is in her situation because of... Uncle, she's here. Can she speak for herself? Mom? If 
for you and your late father. I'll do it. Thank you, Mom. Well, gentlemen, I want to have a private session with my mother. Thank you all for your time. At a time I thought that the throne I had schemed for for 25 years had become mine through your foolishness, you dared dash my hopes in such an insulting manner before the chiefs. That caused which of your mother, a mere woman, to become the regent of Abama Kingdom instead of me? No way. No giving up until the throne is mine. Yes, the throne must be mine. Roaches, for that throne, I strangled my aged father in the deep of the night, believing your father that he was not interested in becoming the Iwe. But two days of what would have been my coronation, your useless mother talked your father into taking the throne away from me. When the opportunity presented itself again last month, I poisoned your father and would have gone ahead to kill you, your mother, and your stepbrother. But for the insistence of the spirits, that even if I killed all of you, I must have to wait for another 25 years. I am placing your soul under my control. The moment you step out of this kingdom, you will never call anybody, including your mother, or ever think of returning home until I have effectively become the evil. Instead of the lady you're going for, you will meet with misfortune after misfortune Pains after pains, until whatever you put in your mouth gives you nothing but the bitter taste of hatred and disappointment. With this bottle, given to me by the Grand Master of Evil, from the deepest point of the deepest sea in the world, I seal this decree. Making me so weak this early in the day. When I went to bed early enough last night and I had a decent meal before that. So, what is making me so weak and dizzy now? God. The last thing I ever needed now is physical sickness on top of this pressure one I've been having for past five weeks.
Talk to me, doctor. What is wrong with me? And the form you feel for us, you stated that you are a Catholic mom. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, is anything the matter? You are a Catholic mom, and you had sexual affair with a man recently, Sister Ivy. Tell me the truth, Doctor. Have I been infected with a venereal disease? Far from that. The result of the test I carried out here showed that you're pregnant. <laughs> Them to come here. What is going on? What's going on? Huh? Rogers is leaving the kingdom to woo his pride in faraway Lagos, and he needs someone to accompany him. In that regard, I I think the best person to do that is his cousin, your son. No, my son is going nowhere. If the prince has to go for such a trip, get a land of the chief guard to accompany him. I don't want to go with that guard. Then do it alone. Let me tell you, wooing a bride is always a private affair. Not for royals, Enimba. Remember when my husband came to woo me? He came in your company and six guards. Or have you forgotten how many people accompanied you to woo Alex's mother? Your Majesty, I have said it and it's final. My son is going nowhere with the prince. And what if I decree? For God's sake, Your Majesty, who is my only son. And, and so is Rogers to me. Enimba, he needs someone he can trust and confide in. Alex is not just his cousin, but they've been close friends since childhood. Anyway, if you care for your brother's son, let your son go with him. You, you won't understand, Your Majesty. This trip is dangerous. Dangerous? <laughs> Uncle, where is the danger here? Must you question everything I say as if I'm a commoner? Eh? L -l let me just tell you. If you cannot find a suitable bride within this kingdom or around it, then consider this proposed trip of yours. A private cross to bear. Leave my son out of it. It's your cross. Leave my son. I want to go with him, Dad. Dad! Shut up your mouth! Dad, Rochas is the next ego of this kingdom. So what? And that calls for some measure of sacrifices from mostly us, his close relatives. How we respect his wishes and that of his mother would send a weak or strong signal to others on how they should regard them. Honor, love, duty, and blood have called me to action in this case, and I must answer like a true man, like your real son. I am sorry to disobey you, Dad. What? I'm your man, Walker. Me, Walker. Ivy. Ivy. Ivy, don't show 
Sorry, I'm still swimming. Hi, B. It's past 10 a.m. Don't tell me you're still sleeping right now. Hello. Hi, B. Hi, B. Ivy, I'm in the toilet, sis. Dad? Dad? Dad and Nelson. Sorry I had to leave like this without personally informing you. The truth is that I left Nigeria for home here to enable me recover from a spiritual crisis that enveloped me there recently. Everything is getting worse here before I make an ugly dent on your valued public image. I have decided to go to a monastery in Ethiopia to seek a spiritual peace and renewal. Please, don't bother looking for me because I wouldn't want any form of contact with anybody including you, members of my immediate family, till I am satisfied that I am back on my feet spiritually again. Thanks for your understanding and may the good Lord continue to be with you. Amen. Sister Ivy. You said you found this in her room, Nelson? That her room was completely stripped of all her personal belongings. Ivy has exhibited enough strange behavior since she returned from Nigeria and that I'm finding it difficult to believe whatever she said in this note. Dad, are you trying to say she's in some kind of Trouble and she has been lying to us in this while. I have a serious hunch that she's into some kind of dirty scandal back in Nigeria and she had to run back home and hide. Whatever it is she did must have come catching up with her here and she had to run again. <laughs> that if your suspicion is right, I think we should find her and, and I'm not go and change into another cloth go to the airport and order transport terminal. Find out if she did leave this country or not. I have some calls to make. We must find out and clean up whatever mess she's into before it becomes public knowledge. How do you trust that, Dad? Pray that whatever it is, it's not scandalous, Ivy, or I will kill you like I did your shameless mother some years back to pressure my honor and my family's name. I went through hell to become whom I am today, and nobody, not even members of my immediate family, will be allowed to mess anything up for me. I would rather be without a family than leave a disgraced man. That was why I engineered you into the convent when I observed that you have a feeble mind like your mother. If that couldn't keep you away from being a disgrace to me, then I will. I must.
with me, Susie. I'm in a big mess. You must help me if you want me to start like Beyonce. No. That's a very scary thing to say. I mean, what is going on? I... Pregnant. <gasps> you, you what? You, I feel a reverend sister pregnant? I mean, how, how come? It's a long story. I will tell you later, but please, I need a place to hide. Hide? See? My dad and Nelson will kill me if they get to know about this. Even if they don't, <coughs> I want to become a religious and social outcast the moment the news goes public. Please. Please, Susan. Please. You must help me. You are the only true friend I have since our childhood. Like my own blood sister. See, if you refuse to accommodate me here, I have no other option than to commit suicide. Accommodate you in this house? For crying out loud, Ivy, this is my family house. I know. I know, Susie. But your parents and siblings are currently living in the United States. Please, for the sake of our friendship and for the sake of the innocent baby in my womb. But Ivy, this is very, it's going to be very difficult for me. I know, I know, I know you can do it for me. Please, 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 Once again, you are welcome to the orphanage, Your Highness. Thank you. You asked to see me. Well, actually, I'm here to look for Sister Ivy. Sister Ivy? If I may ask Your Highness, why do you want to see her? Well, Sister Rhoda, I really don't want to discuss that with you. She's an ordained Catholic nun, Your Highness, and she once worked under me. What do you mean, once worked under you? Why do you want to see her immediately? You really want to know? Yes. Well, I think that it was a big mistake for her to wear the Catholic nun's robe in the first place. God have mercy. Why did you say that? Because I'm in love with her. From the very first day that I saw her, and the first day that she saw me, it, it was a mutual feeling. And, and, and we've been meeting since. One thing led to another. We actually even made love. Yes, and, and believe me, we have been trying to fight that feeling, but I strongly believe that God himself made Ivy for me, and that's why I'm here to ask her in marriage. Your Highness, Sister Ivy is already married to our Lord Jesus Christ. How could you be so irresponsible to defile a virgin set aside for the Most High God? How could you? That is the problem. That is one of the church's utopian doctrinal nonsense that has gone a long way to do nothing but fill young girls' hearts, like Ivy, with nothing but gloom and unfulfilled natural human cravings. That's the problem. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Says the Most High God. Who told you that God wants human wives in the first place? Thank God who gave her the wisdom to return to South Africa in search of her spiritual peace and to get away from the influence of the devil tools like you. Get out of my office! Sister Rhoda, I love Ivy. Get out! Sister Rhoda, I just need you to tell me where she is. That's all I'm asking.
soldiers. Sister Rodo was right. She will set aside for good. Forget her and let's go back home, please. Please. Alex, stay away from me. Stay away from me. She was set aside for God. When God himself sent her to me to get married to, he did that in his infinite wisdom. Now who are you? Or that buffoon of a reference sister asked me to stay away from her. Now you listen to me, Rogers. For I am now talking to you not as your subject, but as your first cousin who truly really loves you. You are deluding yourself. You are causing disaster. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. That is the word of God. And he is too big for you to struggle for a woman with. Stop this madness now or you definitely suffer. Stop it. Are you done? Are you finished? Well, I am going to South Africa tonight in search of Ivy. And you don't have a choice. You're going with me. I will never do that. You will. I... You must. She's a nun, not even after I have married her. Swear. Should I fail, as, as you just said? Maybe because it struck me that. Now remember, it's a royal degree. This is madness, Rogers. This is a silly mistake and you're making it, Rogers. This is, this is a, a, a silly mistake you're making. that he and your father are on their way to this place. To do what? I don't know. I don't know. Come. Susan, place your hand on this Bible and swear to me that you're not going to tell them that I'm hiding here. Ivy? Yes. Are you out of your mind? You want me to place my hand on the Holy Bible and swear to you that I would like to... My goodness! Ivy, listen. You are a reverend sister. For God's sake, you shouldn't be doing this. How can I swear with the Holy Bible? My goodness, what are you doing? I would rather die by my own hands than to be killed by my own father and brother. In my family house? Oh, swear to me. No. If you don't want me to oh. do this, swear to me. Swear, Susan. In count of three, if you don't swear to me, I'm going to kill myself. OK, 
okay, 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 fine, I'll swear. But not with the Bible, please. Not with the Holy Bible. I will swear with the Bible. I will swear with my own. Go ahead. Go ahead, Susan. Go ahead. You don't believe me, sir. Why would I lie? Okay, here's my cell phone. Check the dial that received calls log. I told you that the last time I spoke with Ivy was five days ago. Do you mean Ivy never came here since yesterday at all? <laughs> Why would I lie to you, sir? Is that to say we can um, search the house? Um, search the house? Oh. Nelson, you mean I've been telling you lies all this while? I mean, what do I stand to gain? Come on, what is going on? Oh my God. Is Ivy in some kind of trouble? Uh, no, uh, sorrow would disturb you. Let's go, son. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. Father, I'd suggest we lay a formal complaint to the police and declare her missing. No way. But Father, we've searched for her virtually everywhere in the city to no avail. Even the passenger logs of all the airlines operating in the East African sub-region did not turn her name as one of their passengers. On any of their flights. What does that tell you, Father? Oh, nothing except for the fact that uh, she might have changed her name and gone to Ethiopia to other means of transportation or is hiding somewhere here in South Africa. Look, but I'm truly convinced that she's into some kind of scandalous mess and she's hiding from us yeah, because of what we might do to I forget to know. So, Father, what are you suggesting? That we fold our hands and watch this drama unfold. That is not an option at all, Nelson. Look, I, I'm not just anybody. I am a well-respected Catholic faithful, a political power broker and a business mago, known all over this country and beyond. My opinion is sought for by virtually everybody. Government, organization, and people. In virtually everything in this country. Look, I did not get to where I am today overnight. I worked hard for it. I made sacrifices, including taking human lives. Lives, not life. I will never allow anybody due to act of carelessness destroy all that overnight. Not Ivy. Not even you. Father, we are talking about a situation that has the potential to destroy everything. And you are, you, you. No, no, go, go, relax, son. Oh, Ivy knows me too well to do any stupid thing. She knows what I'm capable of doing, even more than you do. Believe me, she will come back home soon. But Father, what if she does or says anything publicly that ends up destroying everything you've ever built and worked for all your life before coming back? That is, if ever she will. She dares not, Nelson. She dares not. She knows that with these bare hands of mine, I will strangle her to death. If she dares. <laughs> Look, she, she knows that too well. And I'm sure she will do too. Nobody toys with Sa Utobo Mentenge's public image and leaves to tell the story. I have never allowed that. And I will never allow it this time around with Ivy. Never! Honestly, Ivy, 
you've shown real bravery in all of this. Especially your decision to keep the baby. 99% of women in your situation would have opted for an abortion even before they thought he hears about it. Because of that, I am so, so proud of you. On the other hand, by refusing to go home and boldly face the consequences of what you've done, I think that is cowardice on your own part. It is not, Susie. My father that I know will kill and dispose of me the moment he gets to know that I'm pregnant. That man would rather be childless than to have any scandal connected to him through us, his children. That is how arrogant and self-centered that he is. <laughs> how do you know that for sure? I mean, how do you know that he will not show you some understanding or maybe send you overseas if protecting his public image is such a big deal to him? See, my mom died in a ghastly auto crash and was born to beyond recognition with a man. Do you know who that man is? If I remember correctly, my mother said it was her driver. I've never told you this before. My mom was having an affair with a man, and my father had two of them murdered. The accident was organized by a man paid by my father to prevent the affair from going public. My father had a disease that rendered him impotent after I was born. But even at that, he refused to understand that. He refused that to understand that. My, my, my young mother had feelings and I'm not saying that it was an ideal thing for her to be dating a personal driver, but please stop, stop, stop. It's okay. I mean, you were only eight years old when this happened. How come you know all this? I worked in him when he was paying the man that organized the accident and I had everything that he said. But even at that innocent age, my father put a gun on my neck and threatened to kill me if I should tell anyone. Mr. Mark, you came highly recommended as a prophet high. Thank you, sir. In this file are our photographs and our comprehensive personal data, including our detailed activities in the past 10 years. I want our found and I want it done in utmost secrecy. Consider it done, sir. Now, if I find her, what should I do? If you do, don't let her know that you're looking for her. Just report back to me, and that will be the end of our deal. I see. Now you say that you start the search for her here in South Africa, when she stated in the note she left behind that she was going to Ethiopia. Do you have any reason to suspect that she lied? Mr. Mack, in this search, believe nothing. Rule out no possibility, and believe nobody's words. What I say or think is not important. Just find out for me, okay? Okay. As I told you earlier, sir, all the expenses will be borne by you, and that is outside my stated fee, which I must have half of before I start the search. All right, uh, Nelson? Forget me my checkbook, let doing in my house? Well, sir, my name is Rochas Okeke, 
the crown prince of Abama Kingdom in Nigeria. And he's my cousin. Um, please, sir, are you Utubu Matinge? I hope I got the pronunciation. Matinge. Matinge. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Okay, sir. So, how may I help you? Oh, what do I have for you? Well, so, um, we are okay. Thank you very much. Yes, Your Highness. To what do I owe this royal visit from far away Nigeria? Well, first of all, let me thank you for granting us audience. I know I was like to have strange people in your home. Uh, our purpose really is to find out about the particular lady that is very special to me. We got information that she is your daughter. My daughter? Yes, sir. Well, I have an only daughter, and I doubt if she's the one you're looking for. Well, why would you say that, sir? Ivy, my daughter, is an ordained Catholic nun. Well, sir, that means we are in the right place, because the lady we're looking for is also called Ivy, and she's a, she's a nun. She worked at an orphanage back in, in Nigeria, Lagos. And, and uh, she, she, she's a very special lady to me. Um, until she returned to South Africa recently. This is the place, sir. And you are here looking for her. For what, if I may ask? Well, sir, your daughter is very special to me. Very special lady, very sweet lady. We got deeply involved and sexually involved as well uh, until she returned to South Africa um, when I had to go and bury my father. Wait, are you here to see me or what? No, sir. Absolutely not, sir. As a matter of fact, I'm here, but we are here to humbly ask your daughter's hand in marriage. Oh, you are here to ask for the hand of a nun in marriage? Yes, sir. And you said you are a prince of an African kingdom? Absolutely, precisely, sir. Okay. <laughs> Wait, let me call out for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm very Thank you, sir. I'm very glad. My daughter! So you the idiot for yourself, son. Nelson! Nelson, you have all the time in the whole world to smash this stupid heads. Not now, please. Let me paint this wall with your brains. Come down. Now, tell me where my daughter is, you bastards! Sir, that is why we are in South Africa, to, to meet up with him. Are you trying to tell me that you came all the way to South Africa in search of my sister? I swear to God, you will find your death instead if you do not tell me where you sent my sister to. Wait, wait. Wait. Are you saying you don't know where Ivy is? Ah! Oh, for God's sake, he's a crap Alex. Alex? 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 Oh my God. This is just the beginning, unless you tell me where my daughter is. Nelson will be back with a bowl of water and a piece of cloth to wash and tie the idiot wound. If you let him die in your hand, will force you to dig his grave and bury him in my orchard later tonight. Let's go, son. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Father, 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 father. 
Let's go, let's go. Oh, me. Going Nelson. Dad, we are being too soft on those bastards. Permit me to go down to that cell and slit the throat of the other guy before his useless prince. Perhaps that will make him understand how serious we are. They are lying, Dad. They know exactly where Ivy is. She could even be in his cost home in Nigeria. What if it turned out that they are not lying in the end? That they are lying. They are lying. Father, that bastard deliberately talked my naive sister into agreeing to be defiled by him. He must have convinced her to agree to marry him. He only came here, Father, because as a prince, his culture wouldn't let him live with her without her consent. Ivy must have told him the type of person that you are. And that is why he's here to test the waters. He actually came to know how you will take the news, Father. Mm -hmm. If your theory is right, Nelson, then he and his colleague are already dead men. Nobody, nobody, nobody plays such an expensive prank with my own daughter and leaves. Oh, no, 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 not with, with, with the kind of dirty scandal it will give rise to. Oh, but there will not be silence as you want until they tell us everything they know about Hivey's whereabouts. Or we find that ourselves. that you have placed us under. Father, did you hear that? Do you know the implications of what you just said? You said you don't know where Ivy is. Why don't you just release us so we can go in search of her? Because what you're doing will lead us nowhere, believe me. Is that what you think? Well, for refusing this food, you are going to be without food or water for the next seven days. What? You can't do it. Tell us where Ivy is if you want to survive this. Idiots! You said that you and your family are some of the most prominent Catholics in South Africa. What kind of Christians are you? You do not shut that hole in your face, pretty boy. I swear to God, I am definitely going to make you pretty, I swear to God. Ah!
Where is my son? He is where my own son is. And where is that? If I knew, he would have known me. Your Majesty, it's been three weeks since your son and my son left this kingdom without my approval. Their phones have remained switched off. You don't seem to bother at all. Do I take that to mean that it Don't happen? assume anything, Enimba. The goat sweats. It's just her hairs. The hide has sweat from the eyes of the beholder. Right inside me, I am dead with worry about them. The greater implication of the people getting to know that the heir apparent to the throne is missing is what is actually keeping me from making a public force. Isn't it reasonable to assume that two of them must have come to something untoward? It is, but the chief priest assured me that they are alive and will come back at the appointed time of the gods. And you believed him? You believed a seer in such a critical situation with the life of your only son and perhaps the royal dynasty coming to... Uh, what do you expect of me, Enyimba? You are my late husband's younger brother. With his death, the implication is that Rochas and Alex and all the other children born into the two families are now your responsibility. They are a responsibility, quite right. But the fact that he is a crown prince makes him the people's responsibility also. I am suggesting that we inform them of what is going on immediately. Enimba, if you or anybody in this palace lets out word concerning the true situation in that regard, I will bear my breast in public and curse that person. And you are my royal walker. That is how serious it is to me. And you are my royal walker. Your Majesty, this situation is like pregnancy. You can never cover it forever. You seem to be on this discussion is over, Enimba. doctor could be a bigger risk than having your father and Nelson see you. Please, you have to do it. Please. Okay, before you know it, I'll be fine. Ivy, you're not being fair to yourself and the baby in your womb. You're just allowing yourself Susie. to... Please, just get me some aspirin and another blanket. That is what I need now, not your sympathy or your lecture. Thank you. 
I'm a baby. I am as helpless as a newborn baby in this cellar. <laughs> Look, we will survive this ordeal, okay? We will. And I will still find Ivy and marry her. <laughs> in the world beyond, we will find and you marry your Ivy. No! You're the crown prince of Alabama Kingdom. I am just an inconsequential slave condemned to accompany a prince who has lost his freedom and royal splendor in a foreign land. Look at me. A prisoner in a private cellar. A victim of cheap prank of love. That who whom I have become because of you. What I need from you is not apologies. For five days now, we have had neither food nor water. I am dying. My body needs nourishment. That's what I need food, not word. What is going on? Why are they shouting? You can give us food, please give us at least a cup of water, let us share, please. Well, my decree was passed. <laughs> Remains like that. <laughs> no food or water for both of you for seven days. And if I have to come back here because I heard you shouting, then I am going to extend it by another seven days. since you came down with this fever and you don't seem to be getting any better. Is it not time you agree with me that these drugs are not working? I seek for your medical help. I don't need such help. Of course you do. I'm the one that's sick. I know how I felt before and I know how I'm feeling now so I'm getting better. No, you're getting worse. You're just afraid to admit it and that's a terrible sin against yourself. I've seen it against God and my family. So what difference does it make if I sin against myself now? Wait, did you come here to seek my help? Or to commit suicide in my family house? Please, aunt is myself. <sighs> oh my god, oh my god! Oh, Ivy! Jesus, Ivy, please don't do this to me! Ivy! <gasps> Contract to the baby. I will be checking on her twice daily. But if in the next two days there is no significant uh, improvement, then we have no choice than to take her to the hospital. Okay, doctor. Thank you very much, Doctor Brian. Okay. And like I said, we have to make this secret, please. Yes. But if I may ask why? <laughs> doctor, please don't. I can't tell you more than I have already done. Okay? It is her wish, and I wish to respect it. 
It's okay. So I'll see you later in the evening. Thank you, Doctor. Bye bye. Yeah. Okay. Now, in your own professional opinion, where do you think could be a likely destination? Okay. Oh, she could still be here in South Africa. What about Nigeria? Oh, thank you very much for your services. No, 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 I understand. No, <laughs> you did your best, you did your best. Thank you. Bye for now. What did he say to your last questions, Father? He said Nigeria could be a uh, most likely destination when she left that day. That explains it all. Those bastards, Father. Those bastards know the whereabouts of Ivy. Father, just give me some time with them. And I will torture them. And the truth will come out, Father. Hmm. Now, we have locked them up without food or water for almost seven days now. But I don't think there's need for us to do any other thing. With due respect, Father. You are underestimating those bastards. You don't fully understand the implication of what that bastard did with Ivy going public. I say it again. We are being too soft on them. And if it turns out that he is hiding Ivy in Nigeria, She will go public if she doesn't hear from him for such a long time. And you know what that will do to her reputation. Her mm. reputation is dead. Mm -hmm. Such a thing would never happen while I'm still alive, I swear! Father, this is not the time for vows. But a time for action. Grant me 30 minutes with them, Father. 30 minutes with them. 30 minutes of raw torture, Father. And after that, if they don't talk, you can handle them the way you want. Please. Mm. Oh. Alright. I will give you 30 minutes as you requested, but on the condition that I will watch over whatever you're going to do to them. With no interference. Yes, without interference. So let's go. strength you can get from drinking your urine. 
to be able to survive what I'm about to do through you. Until you tell me where my sister Ivy is. Now. Tie him up. Don't you understand English? I said tie him up. Tie him up. I am going to mutilate your palms so badly that you won't be able to tell the difference between your palms and an open wound. And the only reason I am going to stop is if you tell me where my sister is. I mean, a precise location. If I knew where Ivy is, I wouldn't be here. You think I'm still bluffing, boy? I am bluffing. Give me those things. Enough! <laughs> that I was just getting started. On time! Food will be ready in a few minutes. My father, these guys are... No, 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 no! Before you were born, I built this image you are doing this to protect. And I had already started doing things to protect it in those years. One thing I never did was to debase humanity in doing so. And I won't start it today. I value my reputation more than anything, including Ivy's disgraceful life and even yours. But in protecting it, common sense must always rule supreme. Now, let's go. And as from now on, the key to this cellar remains with me alone. You know what that means? That means that I direct affairs here, henceforth. Now let's go. You asked me to call for an emergency meeting. I did. Despite my misgivings at the way the request was made. Now, I want you to tell me in simple terms why we're here. <clears throat> Your Majesty. It's been six months into your regency and close to five months since the crown prince left this kingdom according to him to woo his bride. And nobody 
in this kingdom has seen or heard from him. This emergency meeting was therefore demanded at the instance of our worried people. We are here therefore to ask you on their behalf, have you heard from the crown prince or Alex, his cousin? Neither the crown prince nor Alex is missing. Both of them will come back as soon as they are. We come. do respect your majesty. Tradition is tradition. The question was Have you heard from the crown prince? Well, I'm sorry, I cannot answer that question. Your majesty, we have waited enough. For the return of your son, if he cannot do something as simple as convincing a woman to marry him within a period close to five months, then he is incompetent for our throne. No, enough. Your Majesty, maybe you do not understand yet our determination to put this stop. The dishonor your son's erratic ways is doing to this kingdom since his father gave up. The people have had enough. Um, elders, uh, uh, let's give Richard some of them. We are not ready to give a day longer to a prince who, for all we know, could be dead by now. No, my son is not dead. Where is he? If he is still alive and has decided not to communicate with his people for so long, then it means that he doesn't want the throne or that he does not respect his people. For this, we have sent for your stepson, Prince Charles, to return from England and mount the throne of the people. You asked Charles to come back to this kingdom without my permission? Your Majesty, the throne belongs to the people, and the people have spoken through us. Elders, it is all for now. Let us go. <clears throat> You are my late husband's younger brother and his closest confidant in his lifetime. In like manner, your son, your only son and his first son are like twin brothers. I was told that before the elders did what they did in the cabinet room, that they sought your opinion. And you neither discouraged them nor informed me about it. I ask you, Inimba, how could you be part of such a conspiracy against your own family? Your, your Majesty, I was never part of anything. And if you ask for my opinion, what the elders are doing is, is, is not conspiracy. I don't see conspiracy in that. They are just acting out of self-preservation and on the request of the people. And you know all this. You know. Enimba. Your Majesty. Your son. Your only son. 
and my son, the crown prince of the kingdom, are missing. And if we are worth the name parents, we should be busy looking for them. Asking people to join us to that. Not rationalizing outsiders who are just squabbling over who sits on that throne. Let me say this, Your Majesty. I love my son and I grieve for him. In fact, I've spent time, money and energy looking for my son and Richard's your son since they left the kingdom. I, I, I can't remember saying or doing anything that calls to question my sincerity in this regard. I, I can't remember. So, why are you doing it now by... Your Majesty... Not stopping the elders from asking Prince Charles to return to the kingdom. It's not the same thing as supporting them in making him the Igwe at the expense of your son. See, they are just acting out of emotion and I cannot influence them. Enimba. Enimba. Your Majesty. What I just saw is not as trivial as what you're telling me here. That was palace school unfolding. Stand with me and stop it. Or forever live with the shame of not standing up for your brother's family when the occasion called for it. You may go now. And you are my rock. Nimoka. And you are my rock. Nimoka. Of thinking of him. Several months after that cause day in a hotel with him, I guess this take him off my mind. Listen, Ivy, it's natural, okay? You're deeply in love with this guy. I mean, I don't love him. I only lost it after him. I was married to Jesus and I remained faithful to my husband until the day the evil rogers crept into my life and destroyed my joys and dreams. How can I be thinking of such a devil? How can you call what happened between Rogers and I love? It was not love. It was pure tragedy. Love does not lead to sin. It's a virtue of God, not of the devil. Pray for me, Susie. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me, Susie. Pray for me and ask God to put my mind of every memory of him. Please, pray for me, Susie. Pray for me, please. Pray for me. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Your Majesty, the, the situation is highly fluid and delicate. Any careless move by you, and you play into the hands of our enemies, 
Which enemies? Your Majesty, since you talked to me two weeks ago, I decided to conduct my own investigations. I found out that all that has been happening recently was instigated by Charles from his place in England. Are you telling me that? Your Majesty, both of us know that Charles's mother was killed by the gods for her numerous wicked deeds 23 years ago. She paid your doctor to insist that you go through Caesarean oppression when they knew that you could safely deliver your second child. The target was not only to kill your child but also to remove your womb. Your Majesty have assessed the whole situation. Charles's return not only portents a battle man, but a dangerous palace kill could be imminent, as he called it. If he must insist to stop Charles and his supporters, and then preserve this throne for your son, whom we believe is still alive, then follow me out there to perform your traditional duties for his return. To do otherwise, you will have yourself to blame. Upon the ancient royal stool of the gods is our royal symbol of authority. As a woman, you cannot touch it with your bare hands. Please, with the cloth, pick it up and perform your sacred duty for our returned prince. For he cannot step upon our soil, having stayed more than seven years outside the kingdom, unless you, as the regent monarch, perform some rituals for him. Your Majesty, please, please, Biko, Biko, go ahead, go ahead. To the gods, Charles, you are a total stranger. If you should step out before I say so, you will become a taboo in our land. Elendo. Your Majesty. Spread the mat of nativity on the ground before him.
Kata. You must be kneeling. Is this royal symbol of authority? Welcome back. You may now step on the land of your birth as the gods have accepted you back. Thank you. Elders of Obama. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Your Princess back. You sent for me, Your Majesty. You still have more than one year to be done with your master's degree program in England. Am I not right? Are you asking me, in a sense, why I am back home? Don't you dare play dumb with me, Charles. Whoever gave you the idea that you could just come home and take over the throne at the expense of the crown prince of the kingdom? Let's put it more appropriately. At the expense of your missing son. How dare you? Well, Charles, I invited you here to advise you. Go back to England and face your studies. Because what you came back here for is an absolute impossibility. I will. And I must save out the one year allowed me as the regent of the kingdom. And that will be in six months time. By then I'm sure my son will be back, married, and duly discharge his duties to his people. So if you think that I will budge to any kind of pressure from you or your foolish cohorts. Then you must have everything. Because it will never happen while I live. <clears throat> um, isn't the squirrel cold for your majesty? Then go back to England if you think so. Um. One more question. Have you heard from Rocha since he left this kingdom? Has he called you? Have you had any form of contact with him? And what makes you think he's still alive? Get out of my room. Now. Sleep with the questions, Your Majesty. Good night. Finally, she told me point blank that no matter the amount of pressure we mount on her, she would never leave the throne for me. Is that to say that 
She's already aware of her plot? Calm down, Odawo. She is not. She is not. Uh, she is only suspecting. I have people who are monitoring her all the time. And if she ever thinks of putting us under surveillance, I'll know before she starts. Trust me. That's not the only issue, Enimba. With the passion she has expressed about her determination to preserve the throne for her son, Prince Rogers. There is definitely going to be a big fight. A fight? Are you calling our contest for the throne wits a mere woman a fight? My prince, she is not an ordinary woman. Spare me that. She is the regent of the kingdom. That position alone bestows on her the full sacred and administrative powers of an Igwe for now. Even without that, she is not the kind of a woman that gives up easily. Ask your uncle how she vowed never to let him become the Igwe upon the death of your grandfather and went ahead to force your reluctant father to change his mind about leaving the throne for him two days to his would-be coronation. What? It was true. It happened. Now, even though I have forgiven her for that one, what I know I will not do is to allow her to secret the throne of my ancestors. Now my little brother she's been manipulating is gone. Uncle, are you sure she was not behind his sudden death? <clears throat> Nothing is ruled out with such an ambitious woman. Don't forget I once told you that she poisoned your mother for daring to marry your father in spite of her objections. <clears throat> A woman with such ambition brooks no opposition. She will go to every extent, including murder, to retain power and now she has that power she wants to return it even in a do or die approach yes that was why every member of the royal cabinet is convinced that she is behind the sudden disappearance of her son just to return the regency that's her God knows she has met her Waterloo in me this time around. I will do everything possible to stop and expose her and avenge my mother's death. She definitely has to pay for all her crimes in this family. She must pay. She must. You see, I expected her to take this fight to this extent. You see, now she has become aware of your motive. I am going to adopt a stratagem to counter her. Yes. Now, from time to time, I am going to be briefing you on this stratagem as we move on. You know, what we have to do, very important, is that we must not give her reason to begin to mistrust me. Yes. Uh, Charles, I want to assure you of one thing. You are eventually going to become the Igwe of the kingdom. Take it from me. Take it from me. Yes. Stop! Stop! <coughs> now, where is my daughter? Several months now. 
in this cellar, torturing and debasing us. You think we're enjoying this? <coughs> oh yes, you're enjoying it. Else you would have told us what we cared. Nelson. I am a prince from a noble kingdom. I don't lie. You are lying to us, you bastard! Tell me now! You want to know who the bastard is? Huh? You're the bastard! Hey. You and this animal that you call a son! <coughs> Do you want to know where the Ivy is? She's on my ass. You see your ass. You see your ass. You won't cut it open. No! Welcome to today's council meeting. Your Majesty, Nietzsche, I greet you. We are in a council meeting here, Charles. I know. And that's what I'm here for. On whose invitation? That seat belongs to the crown prince of the kingdom. And by our royal laws, he alone sits on it. How dare you tell me Calm where... Down, my prince. Your majesty. The crown prince's seat is not like the throne. It is indeed his. But his brother is allowed by our royal laws to sit on it if the crown prince dies. Good. When the crown prince dies, yes. is the crown prince dead in this case? The man who is still alive talks. The people confirm him alive by seeing him physically. Mm. At least he finds time to communicate with his people. Mm. Now, none of that is the case with your son for several months now. And so, and so you feel justified to declare him dead? Can you give us any reason? Assume otherwise. Enough of this uh, destruction, please. Uh. Her Majesty is still on the throne. In fact, she is the head of this council and therefore determines who sits wherever. Uh, Prince Charles sitting anywhere shouldn't be a destruction, but it should be a non issue. Uncle Enimba, I beg to disagree with you. As a matter of fact, I am a prince of this kingdom, and as such, I reserve the right. Enimba, please. Tell him that being a prince of Abama kingdom does not automatically make him a member of the royal cabinet. That he can only be here on invitation. The elders and I invited him. Your Majesty, we are in the majority. Of course. No, no. You are in the majority here. But I have the veto power. And on that power, I declare this meeting over. You can't! Now you listen, Uno. I told him a few nights ago that if his aim of coming back is to pressure me into giving him this throne before I serve out my one year regency, that it will not happen while I live. I was not joking when I told him that. Neither am I joking now. This meeting is over. You can go.
God damn it. How could she? I swear, that animal of a god is going to die by my hands today. No, 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 my prince. You kill no one. You can't tell me what I should or should not do in this case, no. I was the one she ordered that idiot to humiliate right before all of you. Anyom Aroko Nimoka. Anyom Aroko Nimoka. She ordered her god to humiliate you, right? But who is to be blamed? She or her god who has sworn before the gods to do that which she says always without questioning? I'm talking about humiliation. Did she spare us by her words? At the council meeting a while ago. Uh, Charles, listen. See, in today's world, the greatest victories are achieved not by physical power, but by the power of the mind. So you have to sit down. Let's map out a strategy to handle this woman. Don't forget you didn't come back from England to go and fight a common guard. Oh. But to avenge the death of your mother, by taking away the throne from she who killed her mother and her useless son. Yes. So come down. Come down. Please sit down. Now, what are our other options? Very many. There are very many. But first of all, let's get the people involved immediately before she does that herself. Yes. How? Um, oh no. Uh, we have to sleep over this matter. Yes. Swallowed because of you, because of a woman. Despite all that, you have the luxury of playing romance with her in your dreams. Alex, I haven't even told you what the dream was about. I don't need to be told, Rogers. When the subjects of the king are in trouble, he thinks and finds solution to the plight. He does not while away his time dreaming about a romance tall nightmare like you're doing here, Rogers. He does not. All the members of the royal cabinet are with Charles now. How bad do you think such is to my continued stay as the regent in Imba? Quite bad, your majesty. Quite bad. You see, even if you survive the conspiracy, I don't see you running the kingdom successfully with a divided cabinet. A divided cabinet. He has the cabinet members. And I have God, my resolve, and the royal veto on my own side. If they are ready to battle over the throne, so am I. Anyomaroko Nimoka. How I wish Richard would return now. He will come back in Imba. One day. I don't know. But I still have six months to wait for him. Six months of peace? Or six months of battle with a divided, rebellious cabinet? My 
you suggesting I drop the challenge and surrender my son's throne to Charles? I will suggest that henceforth I use your head more than your heart in this situation. Enyimba, I say it again. My son and yours are alive and will be back on time for my son to take what belongs to him. On that conviction, I am ready to fight the elders and Charles with the last drop of my blood to preserve my son's throne, even if it means doing that alone. You, you, you are a one of honor, Your Majesty. But I will be in my room. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you. First, I have to apologize for insisting that we have this emergency meeting before our scheduled council meeting, which comes up in an hour. And I also want to thank you for coming in such short notice. You see, they said that... I would. If your majesty will forget about this long speech and go straight to the point. Oh no. Today, this hour, this minute, right now, I am still the sovereign of Abama Kingdom. And that requires that whoever wants to talk to me will do that with a lot of respect. Next time you or any one of you interrupts me in such a rude manner, I will not just issue a verbal warning. I will suspend that person indefinitely from this council. Oh no, I demand an apology. What? Uh, Apologize to me! I... I am sorry, Your Majesty. Better. As for why I... Call this meeting. I want every one of you to swear with the royal symbol of authority to keep the true situation of my son's whereabouts secret. It is an order, elders. Your Majesty, the people are already aware of everything. What? Who told them? Charles. It's okay. I still want you to swear. Swear about what again, Your Majesty? He said, Prince Charles. I Charles, heard what he said. It's your problem. If you don't do it, I'm going to invoke my full royal powers to dissolve this council and rule this kingdom alone. I am not bluffing, elders. Oh no. You go first. I am disappointed in you and your colleagues, oh no. I am totally ashamed to come from a kingdom where men like you are leaders. You did not just disappoint me, but you insulted your gray hair. Something we planned, something we discussed to the later. 
You turned around to make me look like a fool before Her Majesty and the youth of Obama. How? Where lies your moral authority in all of this? Where? Why did you ask me to return from England if you knew you were going to shamelessly abandon the struggle at this point? Um, uh, Why? Um, um, Charles, calm down. Take it easy. Uh, sit down, sit down. Let's hear from Manu. Manu, let's hear from you. Thank you, Chief Anjimba. What happened in the cabinet chamber wasn't planned to disgrace you as you think or kill our plot. We were forced by Her Royal Majesty to swear by the royal symbol of authority. I'm your Maro Nimoka. She did what? Yes. Eh? She forced us an hour before today's meeting started to swear that we would deny whatever his highness must have told the people about Prince Rogers she will be asked henceforth we would have called to one but she made sure that none of us left her sight till the meeting properly started how could you agree to do such a disgraceful thing or no she threatened to invoke her full royal powers if we refused. Had she done that, the council would have been dissolved, leaving her to rule alone. Wouldn't that have been better than the dance of shame you subjected yourselves and I to today? Uh, Charles, Charles, hold it. They did the right thing. That one then. They did the proper thing. If they had refused, then your royal ambition would have been dead. There yeah, and then. Yeah. Yes. So, let's be grateful to them for swallowing their pride to do what they did. That's the angle I'm seeing it from. Please. Mm. Now, what do we do, Uncle? We definitely cannot give up at this point. Give up what? Anyoma Roku Nimoka. Let me tell you. If that woman is stubborn, then we will be more determined. Good. To give up what? She must vacate that throne for you, Charles. Exactly. She must. Your my welcome in my class. That woman is. Your Majesty, the elders of the land, we greet you. You're yeah, welcome. Mm -hmm. I am the president of the Association of Daughters of Abama Kingdom. And here is my secretary. We were sent by the daughters of the land. Having said that, Your Majesty, we were told that you said that the Crown Prince has been in constant contact with you since he left the kingdom. Well, our mission here is not to dispute that. We were sent by our colleagues to inform you that the waiting is over. The daughters of the land are giving you two weeks to return the crown prince back to the kingdom to be installed Igwe, or else all the daughters of the land who have gone through the pains of childbirth will converge here and urinate on the throne. According to our culture, your majesty, if that is done, the dynasty will be taken away from your family and given to another family that will be appointed by the chief priest of the land. The choice is yours, Your Majesty. Your son here to assume his royal responsibilities or you face the disgrace of your family. Nice one, Charles. Nice one. How much did you pay them to threaten me and your own family? Hmm. Your Majesty, at this point, it's no longer about me. Nah. It's about you and the all powerful daughters of the land. All powerful daughters of the land, indeed. A revered association in the culture of the kingdom. A master stroke. 
Bravo. Well, daughters of the land, your threat is noted. But I want to tell you that the solution to what you think is going on does not lie in threats. You are in no position to tell us where the solution lies, Your Majesty. Good. Now, can you tell me why the Crown Prince was not made the Igwe immediately after my husband's death? I will tell you, Your Majesty. Because, as a bachelor, he was not qualified then. Good. Now tell me, if I should vacate the throne upon his failure to return in two weeks and to prevent you from carrying out your threat, as um, Prince Charles here seems to want, who takes over from me? Prince Charles, of course. There we go again. Prince Charles. Yes. Is he married? Um, I have a bride, yeah. Somewhere. Somewhere? Yes, she's uh, in England, actually. Has anybody seen her? Nobody. So what is the difference between Prince Charles here and my son? The difference is... I am here. Richard is not here. He abandoned the throne of his fathers. Now what the people want is a real king and not a woman regent. Yes. 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 Like I said earlier, daughters of the land, the solution does not lie in threats. But if you think I am wrong, I'll give you my own threat. If anybody in this kingdom, and that includes Prince Charles here, ever challenges my authority in this kingdom again, and my son's right to the people's throne, I will go round this kingdom seven times in my mood. Do you know what will happen if I do that. The next seven generations of this kingdom will live, suffer, groan and die under a terrible curse. Is that the kind of risk you want to take for this buffoon here? Is that? Answer me! Well, Your Highness, with that threat, she has effectively killed our plot! What? Yes. Are you trying to tell me we can... The people are saying that they cannot take such risk for you. We have been listening to them since she made that threat earlier today. Please, elders, ignore her. She was just trying to... Whatever she was trying to achieve by issuing that threat, she has already achieved. I warned you and your highness never to take it to that person with her yesterday. We all know how resilient and brilliant she is. She is not brilliant, no. She is just being manipulative. And to allow her she to is hit, in back. If that is why you have brought us to meet in a hotel room, know ye that she has already succeeded. This is a master stroke she struck. The nurse reply her with a counter master stroke. We can start by telling the people that the crowned prince is dead. You talk as if you don't know the culture of our people. Without seeing the corpse of the crown prince, people will not believe that he is dead. But can we crown another Igwe according to our culture? Um. Elders, enough of the arguing back and forth. The question right now is, what would be a next move? There will be no next move, Your Highness. Like the daughters of the land told you earlier today, go back to England and face your studies. It is all over. Maybe you are not destined 
to be the people's equal. Still lurking around, hoping to relaunch a battle you've lost effectively. Maybe by exploiting the sudden deaths of the Oluru and some other senior chiefs. Charles, isn't it time you packed it up, returned to the UK, and faced your studies? That's the reason I'm here, Your Majesty. I'm returning to England this weekend. With all you did recently, <laughs> I'm surprised that you could find it worth the while informing me. I was misled by the elders. I'm not trying to absolve myself of the blame, but I should have known better than to go against the interests of Rochas and yourself. I'm deeply sorry. Well, learn your lesson from what happened. Go back to the UK. Complete your academic programs and be the success story your father has ever dreamt for you. That is the apology I want from you. Thank you so much, Your Majesty. Thank you. Someone is sure informing that boy. That is what I'm going to find out. I am going to be less trustful of people around me. Is it? You thought I was lying the time I told you that she no longer trusts anybody. When she found out about the conspiracy, you see it now. This, this, she asks questions and talks less, especially as it concerns Ruchas and Alex. Honestly, Uncle, I left that room feeling like an overfed baby, a complete fool. What next? What next? The struggle continues until we achieve our desired aim. How in God's name are we going to continue with the struggle? <laughs> Charles, you just came into this scheme last month. For me, 
I started even before your father became Igwe. This is a cause for which I have spiritually imprisoned the souls of my son and that of the crown prince. This is a cause for which I have killed and killed over and over and I will never give up. Uncle Enimba! Wait, you said you started this before I was born? And wait, in other words, this whole thing is not about me, but about you using me to get at the throne you lost to my father 25 years ago. God! So it was you who killed my parents? It was you who killed Onohu and Ichi Okoro because they disagreed with you? How? Oh. Impressive. For a naive idiot like you, it was impressive how you figured out something from this one careless statement I've made. There's one thing wrong, yo. Yes. I started it. But since I talked to your father into marrying a second wife, your mom, and she had you, it turned out to be all about you, all because of you. Okay, why then did you kill her? Charles, there's no time to debate, no time to argue, no time to waste. With what Her Majesty did, coupled with the total withdrawal of support from the elders because they lost two of their persons, the road is no longer easy. So, you come and sit down. Let me now explain to you. Me? Sit down with a diabolical liar, a murderer, and an ambitious swine. You want me to sit with me? You slapped me? You lay your filthy hands on me? Anyway. I am not going to hit you because I don't want you to die in my hand as obviously you want. But as I live here now, I am going straight to Her Majesty to expose every... <laughs> Fool. When you get up from there, you will not argue with me on any point again. The throne is mine. And I will use you to get it. I know my work. I know my work. I Dad, you sent for me. Yeah, well, sit down, son. You see, I've been thinking about about those bastards in the cellar and Ivy. For close to seven months now, we have locked them and tortured them illegally. And they have consistently denied knowing the whereabouts of Ivy. I can never remember the form of torture that we have not applied on them, and yet they remain adamant. Uh, so, so, I, uh, and most of it has not taken us anywhere. I want us to change the course. Change course? But how? Yes, I believe them now that they are here looking for IV. So, I want us to use them and find her before she makes one long move, wherever she is now, and ruin the family. But how do you intend to do that, Father? Uh, from what we know now, you know, we, we strongly believe that the prince is madly in love with Ivy and would do anything to find her. So I'm thinking of releasing them and show them the note she dropped. 
so they can use it and have them go to Ethiopia and locate that for us. Father, you're sounding idealistic. Mr. Mark told us that she's not in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mark is only human, son. He could have missed something in the course of his own search. And that there's nothing wrong if we try to use uh, the prince and uh, his cousin to search for her again. Dad, have you forgotten that what we did to the prince and his cousin is a crime capable of putting us away for life? Those guys are not ordinary folks, Dad. Rochas Alant is from a renowned family in Nigeria. A billionaire family in Nigeria. And if he should go to the police, Dad... No, he will not go to the police. Not if we make them believe that the note got to us just today. That saves it all. Are you thinking now? Oh. And <laughs> now you got it. Think. Uh, sir. You're saying this came in from Ivy? From Ethiopia today? The postage point indicated that it was sent from here in South Africa the very day she left for Ethiopia. But curiously, it really got to us this morning. Well, I told Nelson to bring both of you here and allow you to freshen up because with the receipt of this note, I became convinced that you have been telling us the truth and that you truly love Ivy. So, I've decided not to stand in your way anymore. The question now is, what are you going to do if I let you go now? And with this latest revelation? Well, sir, if your fear is that we will charge you for torture and detention after you've released us, give you my word, sir, there will be no such thing. What are you saying, Rogers? I'm saying that I came to South Africa to look for the love of my life and that whatever happened here is the price that I pay for the love that I have for her and nothing more. With due respect to Highness Alex, there will be no redress of this. That's a royal decree. Yes, yes, Your Highness, please. Good. Now, sir, if you allow us to go, we will continue our search for Ivy. And I can promise you the minute we find her and I can convince her to marry me, we will bring her back here to formalize everything before we take her to Nigeria. <coughs> well, um, my father has agreed to release you. Um, but first, allow me to apologize for... Please, Nelson, there is no need for apology. Well, I have applied for a travel document for both of you to Ethiopia and I'm going to bear the cost. Please, sir. Thank you, but no thank you. This is my cross and I choose to bear it alone. Now, allow us to go. You are indeed a gentleman. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You are a gentleman indeed. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Mr. Edward, I was told you were the best private detective. Specializing in finding missing persons when I hired you four months ago to help me find and bring home my son. I would have used Chief Enimba's daughter, Elena, who is in the same line of business with you. But I chose you for fear that she would be too emotional to be effective. So far, you've not been able to come up with anything. And that brings me to ask, is there any reason why I should still retain your services? Well, I am not proud to have failed in my assignment. But it seems you've made up your mind to dump me and use Elena after all. How do you mean? Your Majesty, getting information is what I do for a living. Elena is doing the same thing you hired me to do. 
and I have it on a good authority that she was instructed to do so from this palace. Is that a joke or something? Who brought her into the picture? This is your file, Your Majesty. I don't compete for jobs, especially with someone that I have so much respect for, like Miss Elena. Are you dropping my case? I'm sorry, Your Majesty. You people left me with no other choice. Uncle Enimba, as it stands now, I want to go back to England. I am no longer interested in the throne. You can, you can keep it for yourself. I just want to go back to my studies. No way. No way. Uncle, do you want me to be disgraced as I was told you were disgraced 25 years ago? Shut up your mouth. Shut up your mouth. Listen, I met with my daughter Elena last week. She is already making progress looking for Richard and Alex. Looking for them? Yes. They have to be eliminated. Uh, uncle? Eliminated as in killing them? What other meaning do you think elimination means in this context? Hey! Uncle, please, I, I beg you in the name of God, don't do this. Charles! Shut up your mouth! I am the person calling the shots in this situation. I say what happens. Don't ever argue with me on this matter. Now, get back to your house. Uncle, we're talking about spillage of blood here. Just go! Are you my rock? Ni moka. Are you my rock? Ni moka. Alex, your pace is irritating me. What is wrong? Is there a problem? Oh. I am thinking about what must have transpired in the kingdom in the past seven months. I am thinking about what your mom and my dad will be doing to hold the kingdom together. Have you not heard from us or seen us? Have you tried calling them? I mean your mom. No. But to satisfy you, just make that call. What is it? Look. Are you not making the calls again? Look, Alex. I've told you once back in Lagos. And I'm going to say it again. We, you and I, cannot communicate with anyone in that village, including your dad and my mom, until we find Ivy, until I marry her. Is that clear? And remember, it's a royal decree. What manner of man are you, Rogers? If you don't feel anything for anybody in that kingdom, what about your widowed mom? In whose grieving hand you left your kingdom? What about her? Alex, I do not want to have this discussion with you again. I do not want to have this discussion with you again. All right? We have a travel in a few days to Ethiopia. Now, if you do not want to discuss that travel, then go to bed. Good night. Your father will be so disappointed with you right now. Let him come from the grave and speak for himself, damn it! Rogers! Put the bloody light off. Off. My God! Your Majesty! Uh, why did you come to Lagos? Who showed me where you live? Yes, Your Majesty. Elena, who asked you to look for the Crown Prince and your brother? I don't understand. My father was here last week and told me that you ordered me to leave everything I was doing and find them with immediate effect. Weren't you the one that gave me the order, Your Majesty? 
Your Majesty. Do you have any information on their whereabouts yet? Not yet, Your Majesty, but I'm confident I will sooner or later. Well, Elena, intensify your search for them. And when you have any useful information, report back to me and to no one else, not even your father. Um, forgive my... Elena, what I just gave you is a royal decree. Flout it. I remain barren and banished from Obama for the rest of your life. If you need money or any other kind of assistance, call me. To health, peace and progress in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hey. Elena. Your Majesty. Why didn't you tell me that you asked Elena to help search and bring back my son and Alex? As a matter of urgency last week. Who, who, who told you? Who, who told you that? You're shocked. Why? I was also told that since Charles reneged in his promise to go back to England, that he has met with you in your house three times. Inimba, what is going on? Anyoma roko ni moka. Anyoma roko ni moka. In the first place, Your Majesty, let me apologize for the bringing in Elena in the whole picture without your express permission, even informing you thereafter. But I, I, I did that for your good and, and for the good of our sons. I mean, with the whole crisis generated, by the absence of the prince in the kingdom, coupled with the fact that the man who sent to fetch him could not find him, I decided to do something. Please, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. On, uh, on, on, on Charles' visit to my house recently, yes, I, I invited him. I, I invited him. In the first visit, I was pleading with him to abandon his ill advised ambition and go back to England. In the second visit, I wanted to invoke the spirit of his late parents uh, to uh, plead with him again. Uh, then, on the third visit, I um, I, I you threatened him that I will get you to pass a royal decree ordering him back to England. But, um, well, the attempts failed to change his mind. Your Majesty, he is drunk with ambition and that's dangerous. We need to watch him very closely. Fault. When did you reach that conclusion? Now that I, I told you what I already know, or before that? Your Majesty, I, I don't know what you think about my loyalty to you right now. But any doubt on such loyalty at this point 
would not help matters. The child could be manipulating people and information to create a division between the two of us. But knowing fully well that without such education, uh, they will never achieve their aim. I want to caution that you will be aware unless you play into the hands of your real enemies. Remember, your Majesty, the royal decree that you threatened Charles with is it in my power to, to issue it on a possible candidate to the throne in the kingdom? No, no, no. I was just trying to, to frighten him. That's all. Uh, to frighten him. You Spanish idiot! You dare play the old street of me! You dare go to our court! Oh, you're hot in Nico! Shut up! You gonna fight the idiot! You gonna fight the fool! You will not live here alive! Until you tell me how your majesty got to know about Elias involvement in the South Florida's! My God! She knows? You asking me? Oh God, believe me, I, I never told anyone anything about what we have done or discussed since we decided to go eat alone two weeks ago. Right here, sir? Yes. I know Morocco. Nimoka. I know Morocco. Nimoka. See. This is the royal sword of our Obama kingdom. Because of you, I performed the necessary rituals to enable me to get away from each place, from the shrine of the god of war. This sword is a chief weapon for all the gods and the kings of Aroma Kingdom. If you lie as you swear by it, you will wake up the next day to find your head and the rest of your body. Two different entities. So, swear by this sound that you did not go and betray me before Her Majesty. Take it and swear. May swear! Uncle, may I die violently by the sword if I had ever betrayed you to anybody? Kiss it! Kiss it! I just kiss! <laughs> she is watching you. The witch has somebody who is watching every movement you make. What? Yes. Caution. We have to be cautious. Henceforth. Search first thing in the morning. This search, where are we supposed to start it? We will start where the notes say she went to. From what we know so far, there are so many monasteries here in this country, and and we will have to search each one if we must. I have to find and marry IV. That's paramount. Why don't we hire somebody who... Look, Alex, I decide 
how this search will be carried out. And I've already decided. We will do it ourselves. Your bid is to pack, rest, because we kick off tomorrow morning. Okay. My visit to the travel agency paid off. The prince contacted them for travel arrangements to South Africa for him and Alex. That was three days after they arrived in Lagos in search of the girl. Twelve days later, they left for South Africa. Unfortunately, my contacts in our embassy and consulates in Pretoria and Johannesburg have no information about them. As same with other con other contacts I have over there. Are you not telling me that they vanished mid air to South Africa? No. So where are they? How come nobody has seen them since then? I'll find out, Your Majesty. I also made another important discovery. The girl in question is a South African Catholic nun. A reverend sister? Yes, Your Majesty. They both fell in love and got deeply involved. That was before His Majesty passed on. The relationship led to serious spiritual crisis for the lady and she had herself transferred back to her home country to run away from the prince. That was the period the prince was preparing for the father's burial. Elena, are you telling me that Rochas did not just defile a Catholic nun, but he also wanted to pull her out of her sacred order to marry her? So because of this outrageous thing, he traveled to South Africa and forgot about his kingdom. Yes, Your Majesty. What do I do next? <sighs> Elena, you will find him. Get him and bring him back here. He must mount the throne of his fathers. I don't care how much it's going to cost me. I will reward you adequately. Okay? Yes, Your Majesty. You can get on with it now. Can't you do Your Majesty? Uh, Elena. Yes, Your Majesty. Remember, you are under a real decree to keep this between you and I. Yes, Your Majesty. Good. You can go now. Best children of these days could be defiling a nun. Telling me that Her Majesty came all the way to your house in Lagos to issue a royal decree forbidding you from telling anybody except herself about Rochus and Alex. Yes, Dad. And I ask again, what is going on? I mean, you told me that you hired me on her express instructions and that. Uh, I don't understand, though. Don't worry, my dear. I was just a little misunderstanding about Alex. But we have asserted that out. Let me ask you. Have you got any new lead about Rochus and Alex? I'm sorry, Dad. I can't discuss that with you anymore. Because of the so-called royal decree? Dad, you and I know how serious a thing a royal decree is in this kingdom. And the Grave consequences of flouting it. <laughs> Alex is your brother, Elena. And as a father, you know, I can give out anything, including my life, to protect you. I don't need you making such sacrifices for me, Dad. 
But not in something as trivial as this. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. And your marrow, Nimoka. And your marrow, Nimoka. What is this guy doing behind me? Earlier today, to this night, telling me. Charles left the palace without telling anyone where he was going. Or oh, did he tell you? I've not talked with him since our last meeting. But maybe he decided to travel back to England after. He left with just a month, sir. His main luggage is in his room here. Yes, sir. Then that could mean he traveled just to Lagos. Lagos? I'm just guessing. Why travel to Lagos just a day after Elena left the kingdom? After giving me progress reports on the search. Okay. okay. Has she made some progress? What did she find out? I don't believe in coincidences anymore, Enyimba. Not after finding out about the cabinet rebellion. <sighs> Your Majesty, are you suspecting she is working with Charles against you and the Crown Prince? And recently, you told me how dangerous he is. And the need for us to be careful with him. Didn't you? Call Elena. I don't have a credit in my phone. I, I will get a recharge and call later. I'll tell them to bring my phone now. Your Majesty, I think what we need is to warn Elena, not to frighten her. Using your phone to call her might sound you're desperate. It will unnerve her. But it will make her lose focus in what she's doing. Unless you want to take such a risk. Call her as soon as you get home. As soon as I get home, I'll do that. I'll do that, Your Majesty.
Yeah, uncle. There's a development. Yes, I just traced her to a traveling agency. Yes. It's been two weeks since Alex and Brochas left here for Ethiopia. Yes, I know. Yeah. And we are yet to hear from them. Are you still comfortable with that? Yes, uh, I'm worried, but what do we do? Father, if they should come back and charge us for what we did to them, Ivy's disappearance wouldn't be the only thing we will be contending with. We will also stop reminding me of the implications of what we did for what's lesson. Father, I am talking about the family. image of a family is what I've always told you that I can go to any land to protect. Having been that before you were born, and I won't stop today. Father, if the image of this family must remain unblemished as it has always been, vows is not what we need now, but concrete action. Thank God you know that, because since we release Rochas and Alex, you seem to have resigned to talking and not thinking. Is there any new plan in the pipeline, Father? I am already implementing it. I have all the entry points into this country. Land, sea, and air under 24 hours surveillance. If they try coming back into this country without informing us first, you will meet them at the entry point to deliver a definite message with the barrel of a gun. Just be ready to do that at a minute's notice. Sorry, Mara, they were meeting in the hotel exclusive bar. <laughs> no problem. So do you have any information for me? Yes, um, your suspicion was correct, Ma. Just minutes after we left the office, a guy walked in asking me what you came there to do. Of course, I bluffed him with a company client secrecy story as he told me, but you won't believe this. He gave me his hotel room number and offered to pay me 100,000 Naira if I should meet him in his hotel room with the information he sought. Well, what did you tell him? I told him I'll be there by 6 p.m. This is the hotel room number. <sighs> it's past 5 p.m. now. Start going to the place so you can beat the evening traffic. Tell him what he wants to hear and collect the money. Are you pulling my legs, Ma? You need the money, don't you? Of course I want it. Then go collect it. <sighs> you see, Mary, on this kind of offer, they don't come every day, do they? Planning to travel to South Africa. South Africa? Yes. Um, do you have an idea when she intends to travel? Okay, I have South African travel documents. Can you arrange a ticket for me on the same flight with her? I need to check if there's still an empty space on it. Please, you have to go to the office and manipulate my name into the flight manifest. Can you do that? For another hundred thousand naira, I can. Hundred thousand. This is 200,000 Naira for the information you just gave me and for the travel arrangements. Now get going. I'll be back soon. Take time to make some. Good 
Lord. Your Highness. What are you doing here, Lina? How did I find you? Should have been a more appropriate question. Why? Why are you trying to leave us? Wait. He traced and invaded my hotel room to interrogate me? I don't know what's going on. But if I see you around me again, I will not hold you out against the police. Alex, what's the problem? I want to talk to you. Well, shoot. This is seven months since we left Nigeria in search of this girl. Seven months. Six of which we spent in South Africa being dehumanized by her family. For one month now, we've been here in Ethiopia searching for her still. We have been to all the monasteries in this country and she is in none of them. Is it the time we wrap it up? I will say when we wrap it up, Alex. It is for me to say that. Now, from tomorrow, we enter a different phase of our search. We will visit all the monasteries in the East African sub-regional area. Do you know how many such places and countries you're talking about? Do you? I am not under an illusion when I speak. I know what I say. With due respect, you are under illusion. You have been since the day we left the kingdom to embark on this utopia search of yours. If only you face reality for one minute, the next will be back to the kingdom. Alex, it is me you speak to in that manner. I know, it's you, I know. I want this discussion closed. Rogers, Rogers, your mom is holding forth back home for you. And the arrangement that made that possible is limited by time. Her regency will soon be over. Where will the kingdom end up if that happens and you're not yet back home? Where? What would happen? I don't care, Alex. I don't care! I need to find and marry Ivy. I do not care. I care. And for that reason, I don't want to be part of this latest madness of yours. You must. It's a royal decree. What? Now, we will not only visit all the monasteries in the East African countries, we will also check the passenger logs of all regional and international sea, air, and road transport operators that have operated within the past two months since she left home. Is that clear? I have spoken. As, as your highness pleases. Now get out. How could we have messed up everything like this? How could we be so careless to let us see you? I don't even know what you come to do in Lagos. Do you have lied to her? Tell such a brilliant lady what manner of lie you call when she caught me red-handed. It was a mistake you asking me to tell her. We engaged her in her own game, in her own territory. Am I to take it to mean that you deliberately messed up this issue? To, 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 to I swear, to uncle, I did not. Shut up your mouth. Shut up your mouth, Charles. Let me tell you. If Elena allows her majesty, and if she gets to know that I have been behind everything happened, Charles, I swear by my blood, I will cut you into pieces and feed your cops to the dogs. Uncle Luke, you have to believe me. Get out here, you buffoon. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Ah, you're my 
ruoko mwoka anyoma ruoko ni mwoka my name is Halina. I'm a private detective from Nigeria. I was hired by the royal family of Obama Kingdom to find the missing prince and his cousin. Who came all the way from Nigeria to my house to come and look for them? I couldn't have looked for them elsewhere, sir. Because in this compound stopped the last verifiable trace I have of them so far. When I mean verifiable, I mean I have concrete evidence from the hotel where they checked into when they arrived South Africa. And from the company that appraised the taxi that brought them to your house on the 10th of April 2010, after which they never went back to the hotel again. You were able to find out that they came here. But you also failed to find out that they left here less than 10 minutes later. On finding out that the person they came looking for here was not here. Really? How come your son was the one that went to check out the luggages at the hotel the next day? <clears throat> um, young lady, Nigerians are known worldwide to be liars and cheats. So if you are here, seated, and saying all this rubbish, with the hope of duping this family, I would suggest that you go back home, because you will not succeed with us. If Nigerians are liars and cheats, what are you and your father? I will call the police and have you arrested for... For what? For being at the verge of exposing your... You are at the verge of exposing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Really? <laughs> Isn't this you in this photograph? Where did you get it? Check the digitalized date at the foot of that picture. Does it compare with the same day you went to the Eden Hotel to check the luggages out? You see, this photograph was taken of you by the hotel CCTV camera. I also have video coverage of everything that you did in that hotel that day. Mm. So tell me, who are the liars and cheats now? Nigerians or South Africans? Now get out of my house! That is a mistake, sir. I said get out! Hmm. You see, before I came here, the hotel management wanted to report the both of you to the police. But I pleaded with them and asked them to let me settle it amicably. But if I leave here without the information I want, the police will be here any moment to arrest the body of you for kidnapping and- Stop! Father, let us tell her all she cares to know. Shut up! I will not shut up, Father! Can't you see a looming scandal and a family disgrace here? We have managed, Father, to avoid it up to this moment. How do you intend to continue to co keep things under control if she invites the police on us? Father. Sit down, detective. Good. Mm -mm. Hello, Mr. Edward. How far? Have you come up with anything as regards to the politics going on in my kingdom? Yes. But I'm afraid 
the situation is more grave than you made it sound when we talked three days ago. How? Are people's life in danger? It has not gotten to that yet. But there's a dangerous conspiracy going on between Prince Charles and the others of the kingdom to have him installed king at all costs. And it looks like your father was <laughs> What? How sure are you about this, Mr. Edward? With regards to your dad's involvement, I'm still investigating it. Okay. While doing it, please, I want you to watch the Her Majesty closely. If what you're telling me is true, she might be in serious danger. If I have to do that as well, it will cost you. Don't worry about money, Edward. Just do it for me. And keep it low. No one should know I hired you to do this. You got it. Thank you. Call Her Majesty? No. Not until I have all the facts. It might be my suspicion. My father can't be involved in such a thing. Who will be his prophet? Time to call Her Majesty and brief her of my progress so far. to stonewall me and only budge when I threatened to go to the police with all the evidence I had. You wouldn't believe this. The man and his son actually detained, tortured and questioned Prince Richard and Alex for about six months in their house. You must be joking. But why, why would they do that? It seems that the spiritual crisis that made Sister Ivy to relocate to her home country continued even after that, forcing her to disappear from home some weeks after. So when His Highness and Alice arrived at their house soon after, looking for her and telling them what he did with her in Nigeria, they held them believing that they knew her whereabouts. They confessed to subjecting them to all manner of torture for that six months period and then released them when it became obvious to them that they knew nothing about your daughter's whereabouts. How dare the animals? But where did they say my son and Alex are? They told me that they went to Ethiopia in search of the girl. Ethiopia? What for? Sister Ivy left a note when she left home saying that she was going to an Ethiopian monastery to stay with the monks until she regained her peace of mind. Did they say the particular monastery? She did not indicate that in the note. Okay. What you're just telling me now is that my son and Alex are still missing. Technically, yes, Your Majesty. Elena, I don't believe the bastards. Listen, just go to the police. Force them to tell you where my son and, and your brother are. I don't think that will be the ideal course of action for now, Your Majesty. In exchange for keeping everything secret, they are helping to provide me with everything I need to trace them, including cash. Elena, you don't need their evil money. I want my son back home. God. How are you sure of their sincerity? I think they can be trusted. In fact, we agreed that his son will accompany me to Ethiopia in three days' time. Okay, okay, okay. Just do whatever, whatever you want to do to bring my son out of this problem. Are we your majesty? How is home front? Fine. Good night.
okay. Ah! It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't shout. Don't shout. Don't shout. Take it easy. Sit. My wrist. My wrist. Sorry. 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 Sit. 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 Sit again. Sit. 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 It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Take a deep breath. It's okay, it's okay. Take a deep breath, okay? Continue like this, okay? You'll we'll be fine. Huh? Let me go outside and get the car closer to the door. No, 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 no. Don't go, don't go. Stay here, stay here. Please. You have to go to the hospital. Just be strong, be strong, okay? Be strong for the baby. I'll be right back, okay? <laughs> She has been delivered of a bouncing baby boy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How is the baby? I mean, how are both of them? They're strong. They're strong. Once they finish cleaning them up, you can see them. Thank you, Tonto. Thank you. Very grateful. Jesus. Here you are, youngest mother. Congratulations. You've just been delivered of a bouncing baby boy. What are the tears for? Um, I am crying for the baby. I am crying for myself. For the future of my baby. For the mess my life has become. Listen to me, Ivy. If there is any day, any moment, that you need to cheer up and stop the morning, it's today, this moment. The only thing I want to hear you say is thank God that you survived the childbirth and all the trials during pregnancy. Whatever that will happen from now henceforth is left for God. To determine, okay? God has abandoned me, Susie. No! You're the one that is abandoning yourself by your total loss of hope and faith in God. Be fair to yourself for once, Ivy. Okay, if you think that your life is so messed up that you can no longer forgive yourself, your baby is innocent. Don't mess up his life too by your sorrow and tears, please. Please, can you get me something to eat? Yeah. I'll get you food in a jiffy. Once again, congratulations. For you? No, I'll be. I'm coming. from Tanzania. I'm just coming back now. But how did it go? Any luck? No. I'm just... Don't you think that we... It's okay, Alex. Just go to your room. Whatever you have to tell me, tell me later tonight. Are you okay? Okay, I'll see you later. Daddy, yes. 
Why don't we just tell Elena the truth? But Ivy never traveled to Ethiopia, just like the note said. And save everybody the stress and costs of another round of search for her. <laughs> Nelson, telling Elena the truth will neither save us money, nor stress. Believe in the fact that we know all that and still allow Rochas and Alex in search for Ivy in Utopia. If she knew that we are aware of the fact that she is not in Utopia, we still allow Rochas and Alex to go in search of her. She would just conclude that we've been telling our lies all along and calling in the police and what would that leave us? Father, she would not do that if she establishes contact with them. No, no, no. She will not do that. Huh? Have you heard from them since they traveled to Ethiopia? If only you had allowed me to kill those bastards when I wanted to. If I had allowed you to do that, what would we have told Alina and the police to save your neck? Both of you are going to Ethiopia tomorrow with the hope of the fact that you can run into those idiots and conclude that episode once and for all. And what about Ivy? Oh, that, that one. Uh, she will come back home someday, yeah? Uh, I believe we have done the best we can. Under the circumstances, we have concluded the search for her. There is this um, workshop the state government is organizing for first class rulers. I was invited and it is starting tomorrow. All right. Uh, are you going to attend? That is why I called you here. I will. Okay. Remember, I want you to take full charge of the affairs of the kingdom in my absence. Do not let Charles and the elders pull any kind of surprise while I'm away. Ah. <laughs> Your Majesty, you can always count on me. Not any time, any day. Yes, um, when are you leaving for the city? In the morning. All right, all right. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, is there any other thing you want me to do for you? No. That will be all. All right, yeah. All right, yeah. Okay. Remember. Your Majesty. I want to say thank you for being there for me since my husband passed on. <laughs> thank you. Your Majesty, was my responsibility you don't have to thank me for that you don't have to <laughs> by the way have you heard from elena i mean is she making any headway on the search surfer you'll be the first i will inform when she does okay okay um your majesty i will be leaving here yeah. yeah. you must talk ivy now what there's a development my parents just called that they will be coming back with the whole family to settle down here in South Africa. You are lying, aren't you? I'm not. If you'd like, you can talk to them and confirm it yourself. When are they coming back? In two weeks' time. I guess you are telling me because it will be too hard for them to accommodate me and my baby here. Listen, Ivy, even without the baby, you know you made me lie to them when your father called them to say that you are missing and they called to ask if I have seen you. So if they come back and see you here, that is the game over. And they trust in you too. Don't worry, I'll sort myself out. How? I'll get an estate agent to get me a new accommodation. If you ask me, I will tell you that accommodation is no longer the only problem we have now. You and the baby need care. And if what you are telling me is that I should go back home, please don't. Because I can never try that. Ivy, 
How long do you think you can continue like this? Even if, even if you don't want to go back home, you can at least let your family know that you are still alive. Okay? You need them now more than ever. The baby needs them even more. You sure don't know my father and Nelson. They are too arrogant to live with the fact that I did not just leave my calling and the church. They are mostly not a bastard. They will simply kill both of us and close the matter. What if they react otherwise? Susie, this is my life. Allow me to handle it the way I want. you to pack my things and your things immediately. Time to pack our things? Where are we going again? Back to SA. From what we know, it is very obvious that Ivy didn't come this way. Could it be that her father and Nelson knew all along still they sent us here on a goose chase? So it seems. Do as you're told. Okay. <sighs> Time to call him and update her majesty. Nah, nah. Let me shower first. I need it badly. <sighs> She couldn't have played more into her hands. With her three days absence from the kingdom, we have all the time in the world to plot your establishment as the next table in place of riches. That's good, Uncle. So, how do we go about it now? Hey, <laughs> Charles, I am a genius. I'm going to have a meeting with the elders today in my house. Wait and see what will happen at the end of it. <laughs> uh, who is that? Her Majesty. And you're not picking? And do you want her to get suspicious even before we start the second phase of the plot? Uh, no, no. Okay, don't mind me. Wait a <clears throat> Hello, Your Majesty. Huh? Who is this? that the queen of Abama kingdom with her entourage got ambushed by unknown government? Officer, please, was her majesty killed? What hospital are you taking her to? Okay, okay, I'll be there. In fact, I am on my way already. Uh, yes. And your Marocco Nimoka. Oh, um, what happened? That Her Majesty was shot by a non gunman, and all in her entourage got killed. Hey, God, I'm finished. Uncle, everyone will think it's me. Now the police will come and arrest me, and. Oh, listen to me. I, I, I swear, I, I don't have anything. Go to the palace. What? Go where? Do you want the people to lynch me? Okay, stay here. I'll give you a call. I'll give you a call. Good. Good. I'm in trouble. Oh, 
What is going on? How come I cannot get either Her Majesty or a Chief Guard on the phone? Is it possible for both of them to switch off their phones at the same time? Hello, Mr. Edward. It's me, Helena. Where are you? I've been trying to get you on the phone in the past four hours. Yes, my South African line is off. I'm calling you from Ethiopia on my new line. Ethiopia? Yes, that's where my brother and the prince are. What's up with Her Majesty? I can't get her on the phone. That was why I was trying to reach you. There has been a development. What happened? Um, where is she now? Um, I mean, how critical is her condition? The doctor said in his statement released in Malibu that she's dead with those still in Ibuma. Hello? Um, I'm here. Um, Mr. Edward, I don't believe it was a robbery attack. I seriously suspect it to be an assassination attempt. Please arrange to have some policemen guarding her at the hospital. Bribe them if you must. If my suspicion is right, they are likely to make another attempt on her life before today runs out. Please don't let them get to her. In fact, go there yourself with the officers and make sure that everything is... How dare you and your guy mess up my operation after taking so much money from me? Take your hands off me, or you'll be dead. You are in no position to threaten me, you action. I have your gun. Do you have mine as well, Chief? My gun, Chief. Now, what the fuck is your problem? My problem is your incompetence. Chief, no more of your insults. Tell us what the problem is. Her emergency is alive. She's alive. What? I, I shot her myself, point blank. Then it's either you are the worst shooter in the world, or two of you are playing pranks with me. As I speak to you, she is recuperating at Uvent Hospital. Oh, Chief. We don't do half job. Of course, nobody takes my money and does half job. So go back there and finish her up, or you have a battle with me. Start a threat. Go and do justice to the money given you. I'm Detective Njiko. I'm here in respect of the short Queen of Abomo Kingdom. Our DP was sent us to find out if she's out of coma yet, so she could help us clarify some certain issues that could lead to the arrest of our shooters. Sir. Officer, you couldn't have come at a better time. She just came out of coma some minutes ago and is requesting for immediate police presence in her ward. Business. Guy. Oh, please, 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 just, just shut up. Please, 
Open your mouth. Produce a sound. I'm so proud of your head. Why? Finish up that move. Freeze! Drop down your weapon on the ground. On the ground or I'll blow off your brain. Drop it on the ground or I'll blow off your brain. Drop down. Drop it down. On the ground. Down. Safe now. Uh, uh, how? Elena sent me to you. Elena? Yes, Your Majesty. Doctor, there's a disaster. The assassins and the policemen that arrested them have just been assassinated in front of the hospital. What? I'm telling you, I'm not joking now. Come and see for yourself. Jesus Christ. Man around here. Mm. The Nigerian prince that came from South Africa. You know him? Mm, yes, I know him. When did you see him last? He was our guest here with one guy he called his cousin or something. Was your guest? You, you mean they've checked out? They just checked out. In fact, if you had arrived two minutes earlier than you did, you would have met them submitting their keys to me. And they said they are going back to South Africa. Do you know them? Yes, yes. They're my brothers. Thank you. Who's that? I was just about calling you so you can join me for lunch. We must return to South Africa immediately. What for? You want to end the search even before it begins? The people we came here for have returned to South Africa. I don't get it. Prince Richards and Alex checked out of this hotel just before we arrived. The receptionist just told me they're returning to South Africa. Join his back. Um, well then, oh, why don't we make the return journey tomorrow? Because I'm very exhausted now. Okay. You can stay if you want to. As for me, I'm leaving for South Africa now. Helena? Helena! Hello, Nelson. Any news? Oh, that Rochester and Alex are back in South Africa? How did you know that? Pack your luggage and return to South Africa with that immediately. If he's indeed back, he will be here sooner than later. Yes, I want Elena to meet him and take him home and off our backs once and for all. Save Janice. Sir, the Nigerian prince and his friend are here to see you, sir. Oh, but let him in. Okay, sir. Oh, your royal highness. What a surprise. Where is Ivy? Oh, 
I was about to ask you if you did find her in Utopia. Deny it. Deny it that you didn't know that she never even left for Ethiopia in the first place. And then you sent us on a wild goose chase. Deny it. What are you talking about? Deny it. That you never spoke to this gentleman. That you never hired him to look for her in Ethiopia. And he bloody well confirmed to you that she was never there. Deny it. You talk to Mr. Mark? What's the bloody line? Where is Ivy? I don't know where she is. You've told me before that you will even kill to protect your name. And what the hell have you done to Ivy, you bastard? <laughs> she is my biological daughter, Johannes. And she's a nun who fell in love with me and ran away, ran back home. It's been your confusion. Now knowing who you are, full of yourself and full of pride, you will even kill her if you must. In the kingdom of an eye, wouldn't it? Wouldn't you? I wish I had known what she did with you in Nigeria before she ran away. I wouldn't have just killed her. I would have equally thrown her to the crocodiles alive. Yes, I, Otobo Mentenge, will never allow any child of mine to disgrace me and leave. Now, out of my house! You ask me out of your house. Out! Now you listen to me, I give you 24 hours. 24 hours to produce Ivy to me alive. Alive! Otherwise, I'm gonna call for a press conference and tell them everything, everything, from how I met her and fucked her back in Nigeria even though she's a Catholic nun. I will tell them everything and that won't be all. I will tell everyone how you pinned us down in this bloody house of yours and tortured us for months and that still won't be all. I will sue your ass off every penny that you have. In short, when I'm through with you, even a slave will be more respected than you. Mr. Matenge, you can't do 24 hours as well. Are you sure they are dead? Yes, Chief. A thousand elephants won't survive. The amount of bullets I rained on those bastards. And I said two policemen were among them? Yeah, yeah. They were too close to the target to be spared. Okay, okay. Now, how in God's name did the police get to know that the boys were going to kill Her Majesty? Chief, for Christ's sake, I don't know. But killing those officers, mm. I would like to be as far as possible from this kingdom. Uh, Please, of Chief. Course, of course. Now, where's my balance? Uh, now, talking about living this kingdom, can you think of any place that is further from here than hell? What? 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 Chief. Yes. Chief, please, please. What are you trying to do, Chief? Yeah. Please, Chief. Chief, please, please. Please. Why you don't leave my flanks open? Especially now that you have hiked the sticks by killing Officers of the law. Goodbye to the devil. Are you sure he was the one you saw, Ivy? Yes. <clears throat> Even in my subconsciousness, I recognize him. What the hell did he come to South Africa to do? I mean, what is he doing here? Maybe to look for you. You must be out of your mind. The devil never loved me. He only lost her after me and I was foolish enough to allow him to ruin me. I wish I had the courage to trace him to his hotel room and stab him to death. Ivy! That's a dangerous line of thought. That guy messed my life up. You don't know why he's in South Africa. He didn't see you and... Come on! What's this excitement all about? 
I, I, I never realized how much I still love him until I saw him today. How can I have a heart that is so soft and stupid that it is refusing to follow the wise dictate of my brain? You want to know why? It is because you're forcing your so-called brain to oppose what it cannot oppose. The power of love is stronger than you, Ivy. It is stronger than the religious doctrine that enslaved your mind for many years before you regained your freedom through riches. It is stronger than all of us. It is. Father, yes, that was a dangerous threat. We must stop him. Of course, we must. Since Elena is here to meet with them, Father, should I trace them and eliminate both of them? No, don't even go there. The consequences are too big for us to survive. The stakes are now too high for any careless bloodshed. Call Elena. Call Elena? What for, Father? I just got information about where Richard and his cousin are lost. Let us help her find them and take them up. That's the only way out of seeing this now. But Father, what if he refuses to go with her? Go ahead and kill all of them, including Elena. System that Her Majesty should be taken back to the palace because of the attempt on her life. But Her Majesty is fully in support of the idea. What am I really saying? In her state of mind, she will support anything, and any dubious person will likely exploit it for sinister reasons. If that is the case, to what extent can I trust Chief Rinimba's motive in this case? I have to call Elena immediately. The moment she used to come is not going to work. What is going on? Or should I try and start her life? She told me earlier today that she's going to be. back here. Well, I returned from Ethiopia about an hour ago. Anything new? I was going to call you after I had to emerge. What? Listen, I don't care what my father told the doctor, okay? Go in there and persuade Her Majesty not to leave that hospital. In fact, I'm calling her myself. 
that that would be a waste of time. Okay. Go to the palace immediately. Call me on getting there. Okay, and give the phone to the chief royal maid. Before then, get the following items. Your Highness, do you really believe that what you're planning to do will produce any meaningful result? I don't know. But it's better than doing nothing with what I know now. How possible do you think it will be to engage in a fight with a man like Mr. Otobo right inside his own home city and win him? Oh. Well, we may not win. But at least we can ruffle his feathers a little bit. Because I believe under those feathers lies the truth about Ivy's fit. What would be the use of the whole effort if Ivy is already dead? If Ivy is alive, I owe her the sacrifice. But if she's dead, I owe her good memories, even more. You're scared, aren't you? This is a foreign land, Rogers. I am scared too. But what the heck? Life itself is a risk. Look, if this is war, I am a prince. And just like our forefathers, who will never abandon a fight till they prevail. Likewise, we will not abandon this mission until we are victorious, Alex. Rogers, our ancestors, whenever they were on the war front, no matter how fierce the battle was, never failed to communicate with the people back home. As you're not doing in this case, call your mom, please. It is not working at all. Let us go home, please. Find us. This is what I do for a living in my house. Who hired you to trace us? Her Majesty did. Since morning today, two attempts have been made on your mother's life by her assassins. What? On her Majesty's life? Yes. And there's every likelihood that more will follow if you don't return to the kingdom immediately. Prince Charles returned to the kingdom some months ago. And with active backing of the elders, he's been trying to claim the throne. Her Majesty has been engaged in bitter struggle to preserve the throne for you. Hence the attempts on her life today. Please call her now. But more importantly, you need to return to the kingdom today. Call home sense. Hello? Mom? Yes, it's me. Rogers. Rogers. Uh, uh, sorry, Doctor. Uh, this call calls for privacy. Can you excuse us for some minutes, please? please.
Rochas, I want you to come home tomorrow. Swear by the name of your father. Okay. Till you get back. I'm so tired, I can't talk now. Good night. Good night, my son. Eba, it is Rochas. He's still alive. Idiot! You wicked old witch! Die! You have messed up my royal ambition enough! Die! Die! Idiot! Idiot! Your son will never ascend that throne! The throne is mine! Yes! It is mine! Chiyogo, what is it? Look at her hand. That raised hand means that the corpse can never be touched by anybody until her biological son does such first. And anybody that does that risks being killed by the corpse right in this room. But her son is not in the camp. And no one knows where he is or when he will return. Yes, Ichiogo. If you say nobody should touch her, then how do we bury her and avoid the body decomposing here? Even in a million years' time, the corpse will remain as it is unless the hand is brought down. Okay, okay. What's the implication of this with regards to the throne? Of course. We can never ground another king until she is buried. But there has to be a way out. There is no way out. Except the return of the crown prince to the kingdom. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. You miserable witch. So even in death, you are still bent on stopping me from becoming the Igwe of Aboma Kingdom. 
and you are my rock. Imoka. You see, bent on disgracing me, you've escalated the world. You just did. Ichiogu was right. Anyone that touches a corpse before her son dies will die instantly. I wonder about touching her and her son. They left me with no choice. The gods left you with no choice. They were just a rose in the bow of the gods. The battle is lost. And uh, I did not go to India. Took all the risk I took to procure you for this battle. Only to be told that the battle is lost. I should get stuffer. I must win this battle. But I am here for your direction. What do I do next? Do not say I did not want you any more. But if you insist, the only thing you can do now is to stop the prince from bringing crown the way and perhaps get him to take his own life in frustration and the throne will be yours. How? There are two sicknesses that disqualifies a man from becoming a way in Obama kingdom. Madness and epilepsy. Mention one and touch me. As soon as you use that same hand to touch the prince, he would be struck with that sickness for the rest of his life. Epilepsy. Epilepsy. Thank you. Now, what about Charles? He must die too if you really want the throne. In his case, apply your own wisdom. Lastly, Enimba, a king is born, not made. Close the coffin now. Yes, we are. But Elena, you're not going with us. What? Why? I need you to change your hotel and hide yourself from Mr. Otobo and his son. What for? Alex, I have a hunch that those bastards lied to us about Ivy. And I need her to stay and find out if Ivy is alive. Or at least how she died if she's dead. With all due respect, Your Highness, I don't think it's a good idea for me to stay back. I... Look, Elena, it's a royal decree. I need you to monitor Nelson and his father. Whereabouts? Henceforth. And report to me when you get any information. Now do not think about returning to Nigeria without finding Ivy and without my permission. This is her picture. Call me if you need money or any assistance. Good luck.
which is a good shirt that, that hand can only be brought down by a prince from the immediate family. Otherwise, she will not be buried. In the absence of Rochas, you are the only person qualified to do that. You are asking me to bring down the hand? Yes. Now, how is that possible when the police has declared me wanted? I am going to smuggle you in and out of the palace. And once she is buried, I will rally the entire kingdom together and get them to influence the police to drop all the charges against you so you can become a Iwe. You know what, Uncle? I'm no longer interested in the kingship. You can keep it for Rochas whenever he comes back. Charles, Rochas will be dead by now. <laughs> then you, you can keep it for yourself. If the two of us are not available, tradition allows for you to be the Igwe. All I want now is for you to arrange the travel papers and get my luggage from the palace so I can return to England. Charles, you are going to do what I'm asking of you tonight. I'm assuring you that within days, I can arrange for you to be back in London. Within days. Are you sure? Have I ever made a promise to you and failed to actualize it? Have I? to bring down her own seven times on the floor. So happened so easily after all. Let me tell you, I'm getting closer and closer to the throne. Which your son will soon be disgraced out of the contention for the throne. That no pranks of yours will stop me from clinching this throne. Called you? No. I couldn't sleep last night. Each time I closed my eyes, there he was. You had nightmares about him? He he was making love to me in my dream, Susie. Come on. Oh, come on. Pull yourself together, please. I mean, you're obviously in love with this guy. What do you expect? Such dreams are normal for lovers. Ashmi, you are right. Must my dream of him be filled with sex? How long will I continue to sin with Rogers, even in my dreams? Isn't taking in and having a baby for a man that does not love me enough punishment for me? God, I know I did a great wrong by 
by by abandoning the other god but please let me have dressed of mind for once now eh i feel like dying right now i feel like ending it all ivy for god's sake don't tell me you're contemplating suicide my life has become a living hell. I don't know how long I can continue like this. Oh, Father. How did it go last night, son? It went as planned, Father. They all left for Nigeria, Father. You sure about that? Absolutely, Father. Oh, that calls for celebration. Let me have my champagne on the rock. Okay, Let's go, man. <laughs> Hello, my prince. Okay, how are you now? Ah, no. Your mom is still too weak to talk to you herself. Mm, yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. So, where are you now? Ah. Okay, okay. Uh, may the gods continue to guide you and give you Johnny Mercy. Uh, yes. Okay, okay. Where is he now? No, just very close. He's very close. But he will be here in about 20 minutes. <laughs> Beautiful. When he gets here and they help us solve the problem with his mother, I would like us to suspend every other thing and proceed to the police station to secure the release of all the domestic staff arrested this morning. I'm your Maru Okunimoka. How can you suggest that in Kyogo? They are being held for helping Prince Charles into the palace, knowing fully well that he was wanted for a serious crime. Didn't that singular act of theirs help her to get rid of that ambitious dog? Besides, all the royal star cannot be involved in the crime. There might be some innocent ones among them. In that case, let's allow the police to fish out the culprits. Let's not involve ourselves in this uh, stinking dirty crime. Thank God. The police also took away Prince Charles' abominable cops and saved us the stress of having to hire others to do it for us. One day, one day, one day, your sins must find you out. One day, one day, one day, your evil must be exposed. All the killings in the palace, who is the cause? Who is the cause? The cause? Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Epilepsy? Yes. He has had this since he was six. His parents and I hid it. We made it a secret. Or we sought medical help. I didn't know it was there until now. Dad, are you serious? I'm serious. Child! Go solve our Baba man. And your maru, Okunimoka. And your maru, Okunimoka.
I understand how hard it is for you. But believe me, your mom put up a gallant fight for you and the throne. In fact, she was a tigress. Pull yourself together. Stop crying. See, the important thing now is that you are back. You have done the right thing, which makes her ready for burial. Stop crying. Uncle, I'm not crying because of my mother. I'm traumatized. I'm trying to deal with the humiliation that greeted me when I arrived today. What are the people going to think about me? What are they going to make about the situation that their next king is epileptic? Please calm down. Okay, after tomorrow's cabinet meeting, we will go for medical help once again. And I'm sure there will be kind of a solution to this problem. A permanent solution? Or, or just another one that might just disgrace me again? Maybe this time in the marketplace? I can't deal with that. How come no one told me about this? No one told me about it. We were trying to protect you from... Protect the... me? From what, Uncle? Richard, you have to understand that no, no, if, if we... Just go. We... Just leave me alone. I want to be alone. Just go. Anyomaroko. <laughs> Lift up your shoulders, my dear prince. A king does not cry in the public. Jogo. The tears of a prince in public is not as demeaning as his health dilemma. If epilepsy or madness is the case. Well, since His Highness already understood the implication of his death problem, with regards to his. Ashiogo, don't go there. Not yet. We are going to seek a medical solution to His Highness's case. Unless a qualified medical personnel says there is none, we are going to swim and sink with the crown prince. As the eldest member of the extended royal family, I declare any discussion on that topic a no-go area, please. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you. I call for this meeting. Because I have lots of things to say, very sensitive things. But in honor of my mother, 
I've decided to shelf them away for now. My mother has to be properly buried. And I want us to put heads together as friends and loyal comrades. Having said that, let me Hello? Elena? How's it in South Africa? I'm fine, I'm fine. Elena, how much is to be buried tomorrow? As yet, I've not been able to get entry into the royal bedroom to enable me to start the second phase of our operation. Yeah, don't worry. Just go to the palace a day after the burial. I doubt if they will let you entry into that room in the heat of the funeral activities. Meanwhile, I will call His Highness immediately and inform him of your coming and why. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, bye. Oh. What's a surprise? <laughs> Why are you crying? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You're sorry about what? <laughs> it's Ivy, sir. Ivy? Did you see her? Oh. Is my daughter dead, Susan? No, sir, she's not dead. She has been in my house since she ran away from home. You must be joking! I'm not joking, sir. I lied to you and Nelson because she forced me to swear to do so. I'm telling you now, sir, because I can no longer cope with her. Because of your family's imminent return, right? No, sir. She... She's contemplating suicide, sir. No, no, no. No, it, it can't be my daughter. If anything happens to Ivy, Susan, if anything happens to her... I'm sorry, Ivy. I can't watch you harm yourself. I have to bring them in. Metenge! Whose sorry. baby are you carrying? <laughs> She's mine. He's what? She took him from a Nigerian place in Lagos. That's why she ran away from home. No, no, no. This is not happening. This is not happening! Elena, I thought you've gone back to Nigeria. Well, my prince ordered me to stay back and complete that which brought him to South Africa in the first place. I'm sorry, I've been following the bird of you up ever since. Sister Ivy, I'm sure that's you. Compliments from the crown prince of Alabama kingdom, Prince Rochas Okeke.
Go ahead and have a coffee. Cool Get out, Alex. I want to end it all. Good call. It's an abomination for a king to commit suicide. In our culture, he defies the whole kingdom. I'm not king yet! I'm not king! You are as good as one. You are the people's crown prince. I am nothing but an epileptic. That's what I am. I'm an epileptic. <laughs> Today on my mother's grave side, I had a seizure. I had another seizure. In front of all those people. In front of all those dignitaries. <laughs> because of this damn epilepsy. I couldn't even perform the dust to dust ritual for my mother. I couldn't. I couldn't. I'm so finished. I'm finished. I'm a, I'm a disgrace. The throne is not mine. It's not for people who have epilepsy. <laughs> You're not Rogers. See, Elena is calling again from South Africa. Maybe she has some good news. Good news? Good news, give me the phone. Damn you, Alex! Damn Elena! And damn every bloody good news! Get out! I want to kill myself. I want to yeah, kill myself. Please. Just give me the gun, please. Please. Just. Having said that, I must add that I wasn't having fun having to stay back here in South Africa, stalking Nelson and your father. I was under a royal decree issued by Prince Roaches, and in my culture. Is very sacred and no one can even think of disobeying it. I'm very sorry about your father's death. I I didn't mean to cause the heart attack that killed him this evening. So does my prince. Helena, you did not cause the death of our father. We do not and will not blame you or the prince. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wait. What you are telling me now is Rogers did not forget me after defiling me as I had believed. That he truly lost me as he said in Lagos. That for the love he had for me, he traced me to my hometown in South Africa, suffered abuses by my family. And even went into Ethiopia in search of me instead of filing charges against my dad and Nelson. And that he abandoned his widowed mother and kingdom and came looking for me. And for that, all the tragedies you spoke about before them. I didn't add or remove anything from the story. Then I want to speak with him. Just give me his number. I'm, I'm sorry you can't. How do you mean I can't? Are you lying to me or something? You see, I've been trying to get across to him on phone since I saw you today, but he, wasn't, he hasn't been taking his calls. It rang for a while and after a while, his phone went off. I've also been trying to get my father and my brother, but their phones are not going through too. That's not surprising though. The royal queen has been buried today, so... He might not be in the mood to take calls. Then I must go to Nigeria and see him immediately. Ivy! Have you forgotten that dad is yet to be buried and as such... Nancy, don't try to stop me. Dad will be buried later. I must go to Nigeria and see my love and the father of my child. I'll go with her. Good. 
to your girls. Good day, can I help you? What, what kind of embarrassment is this? These officers are here to arrest you for the murder of Her Majesty, Prince Charles, and other heinous crimes. Are you out of your mind to talk to Chief Enyimba the way you like? A few hours before Her Majesty returned to the palace, the day your hired assassins attacked her, I had her room wired with video and audio devices. That means that all that happened in that room till this morning, when I removed them, were captured on tapes. Officers, arrest him. Enimba, the gods and ancestors of our mama kingdom have destroyed me. I am going back to India. Go to the palace, restore the prince to get health. It's all over. Because of inordinate ambition, the desire to become the Igwe of the town at all costs. I killed my father, the father of Roaches. I equally, for the same purpose, struck Roaches with epilepsy. Of course, the case of the Majesty is now a common knowledge. I am sorry for all these atrocities. Very, very sorry. Alex, my son. Dad. Come along. You are going to perform an important assignment now. Take this medicine, go to Rochas, touch the bottle by his head, and he will regain his health. Come. Your father is saying come. Tell him I'm sorry for what happened. Then. Took the bottle down for you. It wouldn't harm you. Your father is giving this to you. Go and perform this assignment. Officers, I believe that my time is up. My end has come. You can now come and perform your duty. You have every right to remain silent. Whatever you say will be used against you in the court of law. No, one day, one day, one day, your sins must find you out. One day, one day, one day, your evil must be exposed. Rogers. Oh. I miss you. I miss you too. Susie, bring him. Come on. Come on, baby. Daddy's here. Take him. He's your son. His name is Joseph. So Oh, God. 